everybody and welcome into Jimmy John's Field on this Saturday night. It's family camp out night presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. I'm Brady Beaton joined by Carsey Walker. We get two games tonight between the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers and the West Side Woolly Mammoths. The Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers coming off a heartbreaking loss, a walk off in the bottom of the ninth against the Diamond Hoppers looking to right the ship tonight. Yeah, I mean, we are coming into the part of the summer where it is anybody's ball game for who takes the lead and gets a bye all the way to the championship here. So you mentioned the standings, and at this point in the season, I don't think you could ask it to be any more competitive. Right now, the Utica Unicorns, the Carsey Walker-led Utica Unicorns, <laughs> tied amongst the top with the West Side Woolly Mammoths, but the East Side Diamond Hoppers and the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers just one game back. So with both games tonight, if the Beavers get a sweep, it would be a through a two-way tie with them at the top. What's the mentality like coming into a doubleheader, especially such a key one as you start to get to the later part of the season? You know, you try to be one of the rare teams that can take two. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time when you look at our doubleheaders or across professional baseball in general, it's really hard to take two in a row from right. one team. So looking at what's ahead for every team in this league, it's going to be a dogfight until the last game of the season at this point to see really who gets that number one spot. Because right now, like I said, it's everybody's ball game. Nobody is too far out and nobody's way too far ahead for it to just be a no-brainer decision anymore. When you take a look at this first matchup, there will be a new face. Chase Gearing comes in from Nickel State. He joins the West Side Woolly Mammoths and you're a pitcher as well. So you come into a new place facing a new set of bats that you don't really know a lot about. How do you navigate that first start? I think you understand that it can be your best or your worst game for multiple mm. reasons. Adrenaline takes over and you're not feeling or thinking about a lot of things. You're just going out there to compete. But sometimes a new environment, new team, you have no idea how some of these things work and how teams work together. Us in general, we're a little bit more loud and outgoing team versus you have other teams in the lead that maybe aren't as outgoing or like play the same style of baseball that you possibly play as a pitcher. So you can have a little bit of back and forth and finding it early in the game, but I think that by the end of the game, you really find yourself settling in and getting acclimated to the crowd and everything else that's around you. Ryan Mann will be on the mound for the Beavers, but navigating through that Beavers lineup, there's going to be some tough bats, and I think it starts at the top with Chris Davis. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about really a tough out. I think out of all the times I faced him, I think maybe I've gotten one strikeout against him and we're over halfway through the season. So you're talking about a guy that is a true leadoff hitter. He's a, his bat to ball skills are just unbeatable and you're, he's a competitor from the first inning all the way to the last. So I think with that being said, for a new guy coming in is you're really gonna see what a challenge is like from the first pitch. How much of that do you have to trust your catcher and have him guide you a little bit through the lineup? That, I mean, that becomes the biggest relationship in bat baseball alone. That's your battery right there. So, especially coming into a new environment, this guy has seen him more than you probably will the rest of the season. So you're really gonna have to put a lot of trust in your catcher. In game two for the Beavers on the mound, new or same face in a new place, Andrew Verbruggi has come over from the Diamond Hoppers. He gets the start in game two. I know it's the same field, but it's a different group of guys. It's a different uniform. Can that help reset a guy that you know has the stuff in there, but has struggled at times this season? I think it's the best thing for somebody that can possibly have struggled early on in the year like Verbruggi did. I love the kid to death, but at the end of the day, he was having a tough start and a tough go. I'm glad he got a second opportunity here. And with that being said, it's really a good shot to reset, fresh slate, and let somebody remember you in a completely different light than how you started. It gives a whole new first impression. So we talked about the Beavers lineup. Who are some of the stalwarts in the Mammoth lineup that he's going to have to be careful of? I know there's some names that jump off the page, but when you face the Mammoths, who are some guys that you have that circled and you know you have to be a little extra careful? I mean, I think our no-brainer is obviously always Pearl Dixon. Right. That's just an all-around competitor, top to bottom. Like I said, same thing about Chris Davis. Absolutely, and it is a beautiful, warm day here at Jimmy John's Field. We'll have two for you tonight between the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers and the West Side Woolly Mammoths when we come back here on the USPBL Network.
are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. Back here on the USPBL network, getting ready for the first of a twin bill between the West Side Woolly Mammoths and the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. Brady Beaton alongside Carsey Walker. Before we get into it, let's take a moment to thank all the sponsors that make this broadcast possible. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Ascension. Belfour. Budweiser, Dave and Busters, DTE Energy, Fifth Third Bank, Jarbcom, Jimmy John's, Macomb Community College, McLaren Macomb, McQuaid Heating and Cooling, Plumbing and Refrigeration, Pepsi, Scott's, and United Wholesale Mortgage. Again, a big thank you to everyone who makes this broadcast possible. So we will take a quick look at the game time weather. Carsey, beautiful day for baseball. 83 degrees. Humidity says only 42%, but it is it is a sticky one out there today. Yeah, no kidding. It, it is quite humid out. The ball should be jumping off the bat. Well, we will have the starting lives and first pitch when we come back, when we have the West Side Woolly Mammoths taking on the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers here on the US PBL Network. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. Yo, we gotta clean this place up. Huh? So, so we gotta clean this place up. It's a mess. Coach, the house is a mess. Hey, you're gonna have to call somebody to get that house clean because I need you guys down here now. Who can we call? Well, the company that does all the suites and company offices is Dawn to Dust Cleaning Service. What's their number? 586-932-4090. Give them a call. Hi, how soon could you guys come clean our house? You know, it, we actually have an availability today. Are they here already? That can't be them. Hi, Donna does cleaning. We're here to clean, so guys you got, don't have to. You guys got here quick, come on in. This looks unbelievable. Wow. Crystal clean. Definitely wow. worth five stars, what do we think? Yeah, this is amazing. Five stars for sure.
back here on the USPBL network getting ready for the first of a double header between the West Side Woolly Mammoths and the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. This is how the West Side Woolly Mammoths will bat the road team. They will start with the DH Ward Hacklin. Jordan Hussein bats second at short. The ever popular Burl Dixon in center field batting third. Fox Liam in the cleanup spot in left. The big man, Livingston Morris at first base batting fifth. Dravion Williams Nelson in right field batting sixth. Alex Garbasek batting six, seventh rather at the hot corner. Zach Beetle behind the dish batting eighth. And Colby Seltzer rounds out the lineup at second base. Chase Gearing on the mound for the west side, Woolly Mammoths. They will face Ryan Mann, and let's throw it to the second man in the booth, Carsey Walker. Tell us how the Birmingham Beavers are aligned, presented by Three Dimensional Services. Well, we got Alex Crump behind the plate, and we have J.D. Stubbs over at first base. Then we have Marks Judd holding it down over at second. Ben Wilcoxon over at short. Christian Ortega over at third. And then out in the outfield, we have Malik Bolin out in left. Chris Davis holding down center. Ray Hilbrick out in right field, and Ryan Mann out on the bump. And Ryan Mann, first pitch fastball is a ball away. We are underway on a very warm but beautiful Saturday for some baseball here in downtown Utica. And I believe 528 first pitch. First of, first of two double headers. And if you're new to the USPBL, two six-inning doubleheaders. So 12 innings at least of action if we don't have the sudden death. As Hacklin turns on one, rolls over it, but is able to muscle it into left field for a lead-off single. Yeah, I mean, started off early, right? I mean, look at the keys to this game for them, right? They have to have the offense going early, and so that's just a hot start, and it's exactly what Jelly wants over at first. Well, Ryan Mann has a five-pitch mix. A four seam, a knuckle curve, a circle change, a slider, and a two seam. That's uh, quite the repertoire. A little, little bit of everything from the tall righty. Yeah, and I mean, over the entire entirety of the season, you've watched his velo slowly start to climb as you see that one in there at 93. And with that being said, you have his whole repertoire playing for him. And now with the velo on top of that, it's really just benefiting him. Jordan Hussein up to the dish. Behind 0-1, breaking ball drops in. That's a heck of a pitch on 0-1. to Hussein. Man comes set. Dick Hacklin takes off here. <laughs> well, he's. Been dancing around at first. The 0-2 is fouled straight back. We'll do it again. Yeah, I'll be intrigued to see what he goes here. Jordan really is aggressive at the plate, but also has a great eye. So I'll be intrigued to see if he goes off speed early here and uses most of the repertoire, or if we stay away from it and stay to just two pitches here in the first inning. So man, looking for that put away pitch. Comes set, delivers. Fastball spike gets away and moving up is Hacklin. Well, may not have been a straight steal, but he did get to second. He did move up. That will go in the book as a wild pitch as Mann spiked it. And you mentioned something about only using a couple pitches. When you have a five-pitch mix, how much of that do you want to show the first time through the order, and how much are you saving that for potentially the second or even third time you see a guy? Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm a three, maybe four-pitch guy. Depends on how you want to classify it. Ooh. Ground ball over man, charging Judd, throws to first, and Hussein retired, but he does move Hacklin up to third, so a sack fly situation for Burl Dixon. Yeah, and that, I mean, that right there is the benefit of staying to only a couple pitches here early for Ryan. I mean, you are able to get your out there, but maybe you're not able to get the punch out and lessen some of that damage of moving Hacklin over to third just because we aren't using as many pitches early. Burl Dixon, a tall, flashy lefty, has a high batting average, has a high on base. He can put it in the gap. He can work a walk. He can do a little bit of everything for the Mammoths in the three-hole. Yeah, and that's your five-tool guy right there, and he's in the perfect spot to be doing it right here. 
three hole guy just really trying to work a strong ab and really trying to just get ahead early for his pitchers round ball up the middle judd can't get to it and the mammoths on top early on the burl dixon rbi single yeah just like we said right i mean trying to get ahead early that's the one big kicker for the mammoth offense in general has been scoring runs early in games and really giving their pitchers a shot to work they are well they are a team that sometimes they jump off the page and you go wow there's so much talent here and sometimes they just struggle to find it but you know there's something here with the mammoth's roster yeah and i think it's like we talked about earlier in the pregame is it's anybody's game, right? So you look at professional baseball as a whole and you're just waiting for the offense to do what it's supposed to do. It's professional baseball. Do you have guys with a ton of power and a ton of ability? So it's just really about putting it together as a team is what creates a successful team throughout the season. Well, you mentioned getting off to a hot start. Truer words could not be spoken as Dixon heading to second and he's going to be caught in a pickle. He thought he had man sleeping they run back and Dixon will be tagged out. Second straight night, we've seen someone try to steal exclusively on the pitcher and he gets caught stealing. And that might kill a little bit of the momentum for the Mammoths. Yeah, I think he thought he was playing Madden out there. He kind of tried to hit a little <laughs> spin move out there, but. Well, he knew he was caught and he had to throw a Hail Mary. But you mentioned that the Mammoths getting off to a hot start. In a sixth inning game with this doubleheader, Th these numbers will become so much more important. Well, but when the Mammoths are trailing after just the third inning, they're 0-7. Yeah. When they're leading after the third inning, they're 10-1. and So they don't blow a lot of leads, but they don't come back from a lot of deficits as well. The first three innings of a game are almost exclusively what decides a game for this for this squad. Yeah, and I think that just goes along with empowering or really giving your pitchers room to work as – anybody knows is if you get ahead early it makes it very hard for teams to come back and so when they're able to do that the stat line shows fox liam up to bat with nobody on takes a healthy hack at the two and one fastball hums in at 92. yeah and i mean it's fox doing what fox does he's trying to do damage here at the plate and he's really trying to once again extend that lead and make sure that they can win through these first three innings I have to imagine the approach changes a little bit with one on and one away to now nobody on and two outs. Now you can maybe swing a little more freely. Yeah, I think you're trying to extend the inning, but also you are trying to do damage. He's in this four-hole spot for a reason, so he's trying to act on that. Stays alive, the fastball, 94 on the gun. That was on the black away. That's a tough pitch to follow off. Yeah, that's that's got to be feeling a little bit faster than 94. Man, just so tall and lanky, that pitch has to get on you in a hurry. Liam waits on the 2-2. Misses low and in, count runs full. Yeah, and I mean, you're talking about 95 right there, down and in. I mean, uh, it's a Tristan McKenzie build and almost the Tristan McKenzie repertoire too when you watch him pitch. Man, looking for that put away pitch. Missed up the ladder and Liam works the two out walk. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with the way that his velo and his pitches play is he's got to be confident enough to throw stuff over the plate and not be scared of, hey, weak contact up the middle, like the hit that he gets up to Burl. It's got to be a game of staying aggressive and make guys get themselves out. Hitting's a lot harder than pitching, even though sometimes when you're out there on the mound, it feels like you're just out there on this island alone. First pitch, a swing and a, and a foul tip from Livingston Morris. Take a look at some of the numbers for Ryan Mann in 32 innings of work. Not a big strikeout guy despite the high velocity. 23 strikeouts in 32 innings. Also doesn't walk a lot, only 11 in that span. Yeah, and that goes with really going after guys. Obviously for him, I feel like he would want to see the walk count just a little bit lower and see those strikeouts start to rise more. But the velo going up has been a recent thing. He slowly just gained it throughout the season. So you're really starting to see him get to his best here in the second half. Quickly 0-2 on the big man, Livingston Morris. Runner on first with two away, the 0-2. In on the hands, a 1-2 with the fastball. Yeah, almost got him there. 
I mean, that's a big man up the plate. <laughs> there is a lot of human to have to avoid <laughs> on the inside part of the plate. Sight has has him down at, I believe, about six foot five. The one, two, wave and a miss. We'll put a pin in it. The off speed had Morris swinging out in front. Ryan Mann gives up a couple singles and a run. West side Woolly Mammoths on top. We head to the bottom of the first here on the USPBL Network. on the field. Let's send it back up to Kevin now. Back here on the US PBL Network, one nothing Mammoths already. As the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers coming up to bat, let's take a look at the starting nine for the Beavers in game number one, the ever dangerous Chris Davis leads off in center field. Rudy Ramirez, the Wayne State product, the designated hitter in the two spot. J.D. Stubbs is the first baseman batting third. Malik Bolin in left field in the cleanup spot. Batting fifth, the right fielder Ray Hilbrick. Christian Ortega is at third base batting sixth. Marcus Judd at second batting seventh. Alex Crump behind the dish batting eighth. And Ben Wilcoxon at short batting ninth. Obviously, Ryan Mann on the mound for the Beavers. And they will face one of the new faces in the U.S. PBL, Chase Gearing. And behind him, Carsey, how are the Mammoths aligned tonight, presented by Three Dimensional Services? Yeah, over at first base, we have Livingston Morris, Colby Seltzer over at second, Jordan Hussein over at shortstop, Alex Garbasic over at third, Fox Liam out in left, Burl Dixon out in center, and Dravian Williams Nelson out in right field. And behind the dish, you have Zach Beadle. And on the bump, like you said, the newcomer, Chase Gearing. And that's a pretty nice outfield to have as a pitcher. If you're going to ease into this league, I'd like to have those three guys patrolling the outfield. They can take away a few hits. Yeah, I mean, they're one of the most frustrating outfields to play against <laughs> on just the other side, just because it feels like anything in the air, it's getting caught. Like, I've watched Burl just make, I mean, week one, a highlight diving play that we thought was a no-doubter. And I don't, I still don't think that will be beat as play of the years. Chris Davis comes up to bat, a whopping 370 batting average, Leads the league in batting average. One of the guys at four home runs in the league. He hits for contact. He hits for power. And he's the leadoff man for the Beavers. We talked about it in the pregame show, but it bears repeating. Yeah, I mean, you he's doing it all right now. I couldn't, as a friend of his, I couldn't ask to see somebody succeed more than him. But he is the most frustrating person probably in this league to pitch against right now. Fastball just catches that outside corner for strike two. One and two to Davis, the lefty. Waits, Gearing delivers. Tried to go that same spot, maybe stretch it out a little wider. Ball two, count evens up. Yeah, and I mean, right here, this is where you've really got to put the work in as a pitcher. He's really got to try to do his best to put Chris away here. The 2-2, two -two, fouled off. And as a pitcher, if you get a call that maybe think, ooh, that was maybe a bit outside or a bit high, Try to stretch that, see how far they'll give you off the plate or above the letters. Yeah, I think as the game goes on, you start to test those limits. The first inning is always touch and feel. You're always getting familiar with umpires. Obviously, we don't have the same relation that catchers do with right. them of knowing where the zone's at. So I can only take where my eyes are seeing it. Mm -hmm. So trying to stretch just becomes such a, like, it's the artwork of trying to paint corners. Seventh pitch of the initial at-bat for the Beavers. I have to do an eighth. Third straight foul ball from Chris Davis. He's battling here early on. Yeah, and I think we talked about this in the pregame show as well. I talked about his bat ball skills just being something different. And this year he's really come in. I mean, the 370 average speaks for itself. But when you watch him just foul pitch after pitch off, it's oh. 
Strike three called. Thought it might have been away. Home plate umpire says caught the black. Backwards K and Chase Gearing, first batter he faces in the US PBL gets the punch out. Yeah, and I, I mean, that's exactly, I'm sure, how we wanted to start it. I mean, there's no better feeling than starting the game off with the punch out. Has to feel good just to get that first one out of the way, and it settles you in a little to the game, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, especially with such a long day. I mean, you have two games going on. It's it's really just eases you into the rest of this, knowing that you can possibly go all six, depending on where your kind of pitch count is. And to strike out a guy like Chris Davis, first batter, got to help the confidence a bit as Ramirez jam shot over to third. Garbersick picks it up, throws over to Morris, two up, two away in the home half of the first. Yeah, and right now he's just rolling through. He looks eased in, he looks settled. It's going to be interesting to watch once he gets into trouble how he possibly reacts if that moment does come. J.D. Stubbs trying to put a little pressure on Gearing. He's only thrown 10 pitches to retire the first two batters. Stubbs hitting just a bit over 260, trying to keep this inning alive. Puts it in the air, first pitch he sees. Liam camps underneath it, brings it in, and 11 pitches for Chase Gearing to get out of the first inning. We'll head to the second, one nothing Mammoths here on the USPBL Network. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Couple of fans settling in for 12 innings of action today. Game one of the doubleheader here at Jimmy John's Field. The Mammoth struck first in the top of the first. They will send up six, seven, eight in the order. Dre Williams, Nelson, Alex, Garbasek, and Zach Beadle do up. Brady Beaton alongside Carsey Walker and Ryan Mann gave up a run in that first inning, but didn't give up much hard contact. Yeah, and I, that's what I was just going to say is it's not hard contact. He got to beat a little bit on the ground, but I don't think that's anything to discourage the confidence. I think he needs to go out there and keep pitching his game and just trust his stuff. Dre Williams Nelson comes up to bat. He's one of the newer faces here in the USPBL, and I have to say in his short time here, he's at least caught my eye. He's hit pretty well, and he's shown a good glove in the field is the first pitch missed, and they said he held up ball one. Wow. I mean – I, from here, it looked like you went around, but I don't think that we necessarily had the best viewpoint. And you're a pitcher. You're gonna. You're always gonna <laughs> side with the pitcher. You're never gonna give the batter the benefit of the doubt. I can't do that this season. I know all these guys too well to give them. <laughs> one and one. Is Nelson in just a small sample size, hitting 286. Breaking ball misses low. I mean, he is really bending that thing in there today. It looks like he's really got all of his pitches working for him so far. I think we've seen mostly just the fastball and the curve, but it looks dialed in. Fastball at 92 misses away, but Dre Williams Nelson, only 14 at bats to this point. Had a couple of RBIs, had a game winning RBI a couple games ago. I'm going to make a name for himself. Spent some time in the Angels organization as we have time called. Oh, and I think we just heard off the mic there that that was a pitch clock violation because he didn't actually grant him time. Oh, all right. So, Jay Williams Nelson gets a 
free pass. With the biggest bat flip I've ever seen on a walk right there. <laughs> he almost got that to the dugout. Well, there's, that's a long way. So it's not, he's not trying to pimp something. He just has to really throw it to get it to the dugout. And I, and I still don't know how to write that it's a pitch clock. Do I draw a little clock next to my base on ball in the, in the scorebook? I feel like that works. We'll see your we'll see your drawing skills up here today. Oh, they're see not how many good. Of those we get. I, I never had fine motor skills. <laughs> First pitch to Garbasic is a fastball. That's why when I played football, I was a lineman and not. I wasn't a, a receiver or any of the skill <laughs> positions. It was brute. Tried tried to do brute force. <laughs> I trust you with the rock. <laughs> Runner on first. Nobody out. Ball gets away from Crump, and just like last inning, the wild pitch moves the leadoff man into scoring position. Yeah, and I think at this point, Ryan really just needs to take the time here, slow the game down, just control what he can control, and just go from there. I think right now, some of these moments, I, I can speak from experience, you let the game speed up on yourself, and that's when everything starts to stockpile, and you see some of those bigger innings happen. Maybe a little bit of frustration from the pitch clock walk. Uh, I mean, last inning, it was a weak single as Garbasic, nothing weak about that one. Lines one He's into left, at home. and Dre Williams Nelson comes in to score 2 nothing. Mammoth, they're seeing the ball well. Garbasic with the RBI single. Yeah, and I mean, that's that moment right there, right, where a pitch clock violation kind of comes back to bite you. That's where it's the nuances of the game really right. start to take over, and this is sometimes the repercussions of it because without that, I mean, a year ago, that walk may not have happened. It could have ended up being a punch out or just an out in general. And the second straight inning, a single or a walk, then a wild pitch moves him into scoring position, scores, you can argue, because of that wild pitch. Yeah, and I mean, that's where you've got to have your conversations with your catcher and really figure out, hey, if I'm missing in one spot or another, what, what's the adjustment I need to make here going back out for my next half? Because that's what's going to be able to keep you and your team in the ballgame. Zach Beadle up to bat. He struggled at the dish. Average in the 100s. Trying to find his way out of it. Fouls a second pitch away, 0 oh and 2. Yeah, and those are two healthy hacks right there. I mean, he is really trying to do damage and just keep adding this lead before they get to that third inning mark. And in such a short game, only six innings for the doubleheader, if you can get, you know, a 3-4 run lead in the second inning, that's that's pretty healthy and you're feeling pretty good. You just got to finish out basically four more innings. Yeah, and I think the one thing I realized looking at those stats about them being ahead or behind going into that third inning or after the third inning is I think the Mammoths have played a solid amount of double headers this year. So they played a lot of these short games. So that stat line gets a little bit skewed because now the third inning is halfway through the game instead of a third of the way through. Right. Beetle strikes out his check swing went around. So one on, one away. Colby Seltzer to the dish. Yeah, another guy that's not necessarily doing his best work at the plate right now that's trying to find his way out. But I mean, this is still anybody's ball game and he can really do some damage and help his team here. Well, a cure for those woes would be an RBI single. You can just push one through the infield. I have to imagine you're going to try to score Garbasic from second. Yeah, I mean, him at the dish right now, you've just got to keep it as simple as possible. You've really just got to try to stay true to who you are and not try to be somebody else that you're not. Despite the low batting average, still has an OBP. It's at 250, but when you're not hitting the ball, at least you're working walks and finding your way on base at least some of the time. Yeah, and I think that's what you notice the higher you move up in levels throughout, whether it be college, professional baseball, whatever it may be, is watching how guys' tastes get better. There's that swing and miss element that's not there anymore. Ground ball to Wilcox, and he looks Garbasic back to the bag and is still able to retire Seltzer. Two away, and Ryan Mann has bounced back fairly nicely after the RBI hit. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what you need to do, right? You need to go and you need to get two guys out and really give yourself a shot, put guys away, and also get your confidence back. Right. You, you have a pitch clock violation, a wild pitch, and then a hard hit ball to left that ended up scoring a run. You have to get yourself mentally back there because right then it just feels like the game's completely out of your hands. Ward Hacklin back to the dish, led off the game. 
Rolled over one, but got it in between third and short. Looking for his second hit of the day, 0-1. And holds the ball at the belt. The kick and deal. Ooh. Just missed, maybe a bit high, but not a bad pitch for man. Yeah, and I think that's, you have to figure out where your umpire's at. Uh, some days that's gonna be a strike, and other days it's just not. And also the, the, the mound here is slightly higher than people realize, and it doesn't necessarily look like it if you're watching the broadcast right now. Right. But that thing is a mountain out there. <laughs> And so getting downhill and like those pitches that feel like they're belt high are actually coming from a higher release angle than right. you are used to or realize. And especially when you're as tall as Ryan is, that thing is coming straight downhill. Slow off speed had Hacklin on his front foot. He tried to hold up. He just couldn't keep the weight back any longer. Yeah, and I mean, for a guy that's sitting low to mid 90s right now, that's able to just come back and just throw 73 past you right there. I mean, that's the world of difference. Now the mental game. Do you go come? Do you come back with something soft, or do you bring the heater? Try to get it by Hacklin. Two balls, two strikes. Runner on second. We are in the second inning. Flare to right. That gets down for a base hit. Garbasek around third, he strolls on home, and Ward Hacklin with a nice piece of two out, two strike hitting, gives himself an RBI and a three nothing lead for his Wooly Mammoths. Yeah, and I think that's where pitchers can get themselves into trouble sometimes, is you just try to be too fine. You're trying to do just that little bit. You saw that big swing and a miss on the first one. Then he just happened to give him too much over the plate right there, and you gave him a chance to really put a ball into play. As Hacklin goes down to second, the throw, the tag, not in time. Ooh. Hacklin puts himself in scoring position, shows off the wheels. Yeah, and Judd thought he got him right there. It was close. There's a good effort from Marcus to try to get that tag in quick. Just think if the throw is maybe just a bit to the right of the bag instead of the left, maybe he can make that tag. But Hacklin showing off the speed, went on the first pitch he saw. Yeah, and he's got a sneaky little bit of amount of speed. I mean, there's a reason that he's where he is in the lineup. It's because he can actually get on and move around a little bit. Pop up into the clouds. There goes the shallow right field. Judd squeezes it, so the stolen base. Much ado about nothing. We head to the bottom of the second. Mammoth's up 3-0 here on the USPBL Network. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. At Ascension Michigan, we're committed to being your first choice for healthcare. Our nationally recognized heart program is the leader throughout Michigan in minimally invasive heart valve procedures. For joint replacement, spine, and cancer care, patients choose our specialists for advanced care and treatment. And we also excel in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. Three nothing. Taylor Jelniak's crew is rolling early as the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers send up Malik Bull and Ray Hillbrick and Christian Ortega. Try to cut into this league, but Chase Gearing has to instill a little bit of confidence knowing you have a three run cushion to work with. Yeah, especially when you this is, game is cut down by a third is he only has to get through a few more innings. Like, he really just has to be solid for the next few innings and possibly if they hand it off to the bullpen since it's his first start here, give the bullpen a chance to just shut the door and keep the game going. So, Gearing comes to us by way of Nickel State where he spent three seasons, was at Saginaw Valley for one all the way back in 2019, but the last three seasons spent down at Nickel State, and he threw 49 innings 
this season. So not a ton of work in college, enough that you can stretch him out a little bit. Maybe you don't have to monitor him as much, at least early on in his pro career. Yeah, I mean, he's got the innings under his belt to go out there and at least be able to handle six if that were the need. But I think he's got enough under him that and the bullpen is experienced enough at this point the season that he can go for and hand it off to anybody that they want to really close this game out. Two balls, two strikes to Malik Bolin. Power bat from the right side. Breaking ball, pounded into the dirt, foul. Yeah, I mean, you can pay attention here. Like, we are in that second half of the season, and right now you're just watching him get a heavy dose of off speed. He may not like it as much as he would prefer to get just fastballs fed to him right now from a new guy, but that's your catcher being experienced right here. There's a fastball taken the other way. Looked like off the handle. Burl Dixon settles underneath of it for out number one. Four up, four away for Chase Gearing in the bottom of the second. Brady beating alongside Carsey Walker as the fans have settled in and JJ going to work in the second inning. Again, we all know he's the he's the number one star here at Jimmy John's Field. Yep, and I mean, it's always nice to see him around the ballpark, even for players. I mean, it just brings a different element to the stadium, and it also just gives a nice, friendly face to see every day when you show up to the field. Absolutely. I think last night for the Diamond Hoppers, Whit Hughes was coming up to bat, and there was a big ovation. I'm like, Did you have a lot of family coming? And I looked down, and I see JJ. I was like, oh. I like Witt, and he deserves a round of applause, <laughs> but I know it's for J.J. Yeah, we all know it's for J.J. Ray Hillbrick coming up to bat. One ball, one strike as the pitch misses low. Can he do it here? Can he just keep going and just not allow a hit? Well, it's been a... A little bit of everything, a strikeout, a Ooh. ground out. There's a hard hit ball to left. Liam almost misplayed it, but was able to recover in time. Took that half step in, and I think that ball got on him a little quicker than he expected. Makes the play, but Hart probably skipped a beat if you're Chase on the mound. <laughs> you know, I thought I had a little bit of caster's curse my first time up here. I say, oh, that, will he not give up the right, hit? And, and then, then the hardest ball so far of the day just gets hit. It was 94 off the bat, so that's a good swing from Hildred. As Christian Ortega, good swing, Burl Dixon on it. So back-to-back, -back, good hacks from the Beavers, but can't do much. 22 pitches thrown from Chase Gearing through two innings. 3-0 Mammoths, we head to the third. With a transforming world, we can see how drastically the world is heading towards automation. And so, we need 24-7 surveillance and security systems for our homes and businesses to avoid any theft or breach of privacy. Jarpcom brings the installation of security cameras to the tip of your fingers with our state-of-the-art mobile app. Jarpcom also provides surveillance monitoring of your entire property with flexible options that offer a dependable solution to be scaled to fit any domestic or commercial need. Contact JARPCOM today for a free estimate at 800-369-0374 or look us up on the web at JARPCOM.com. Check your checking. If your account doesn't get you pumped, amped, or geeked, make the switch to Genius Checking from Genesis Credit Union. It's just genius. Ryan Mann back out for his third inning of work. Been knocked around a little bit as you see the line score on your screen. Trying to settle down and just put a, a goose egg up here in the third. Maybe settle the game down a bit. Because again, six inning doubleheader, there's not a lot of time to settle this down. Yeah, and this is the pivotal inning that we talked about at the beginning of the game. This is where this can be the deciding factor of if the Mammoths win this or if the Beavers can make a comeback here and really turn this into a ball game. So it becomes even more vitally important for the standings. And Carsey, I know you have a stake in this. Uh, if you're unaware, Carsey, a pitcher for the Utica Unicorns. But right now, the standings 
about as close as you can get. You can see on the screen, the Mammoths and the Unicorns tied for first place. The Beavers a game back. The Diamond Hoppers also a game back. But if the Beavers were to get the sweep, they would be technically tied, I believe, with the Unicorns for first. And if the Mammoths can get a sweep, they'll have two games on your Unicorns, Carson. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't like rooting against anybody, but <laughs> you have to be also impartial at the same time. in the booth. Yep, I do have to be impartial for the six here. innings. But it, it is a it is a pivotal two game series as a slow ground ball just gets past a racing Judd. He traveled a long way, but Burl Dixon just muscled it enough into right field for his second hit of the day. And I know we talked about it in the pregame show, but once again, I mean. It's anybody's race when it comes to the standings and everything else that's going on in the league right now. I mean, when you talk about player of the year, MVP, I mean, I mean, you talk about MVP alone right now. I mean, Chris Davis and Burl Dixon are neck and neck for it right now. I think there's uh, about a half a dozen names that reasonable people can throw out there and you'd have a point. Burl Dixon on first, he's got speed. Liam at the dish, nice pick from Crump to keep Dixon at first base we almost had the third straight wild pitch to move the leadoff man up yeah i think hopefully here this is where we kind of break the cycle here for ryan to just really allow himself to control the game and slow down time called crump adjusting the glove the leadoff man has reached for the third straight inning and carson you know as a pitcher that'll just make your life a lot harder dealing with guys on base yeah, I mean, nobody ever likes pitching out the stretch anyways. The windup's a lot more fun and it's a lot more comfortable. But with that being said, right, is this is where he has to bear down and really get comfortable with being out of the stretch as he takes off here. Ground ball keeps them out of the double play. Judd Fields throws the first, Liam retired. So the steal attempt from Dixon at least keeps the twin killing ground ball out of play and he's in scoring position for Livingston Morris. Yeah, and we broke the cycle, but how does the cycle change from here? Now you still have a runner on second with one out. Right, can you get that zero up on the scoreboard? Morris struck out swinging at a breaking ball last time up. First pitch misses inside, one and oh. I mean, we said it earlier, but that is just a big man at the plate that is looking to do some damage to a baseball. Well, on the mound for the Beavers, you have Ryan Mann, who's listed at six foot five, and then you look at Livingston Morris, who is listed at six foot five to fifty-five. It's a uh, it's a battle of the Goliaths right now. <laughs> yeah, there's no David in the situation. No. Crump might be the David in the right situation. <laughs> the dish. And then you see Burl Dixon on your screen. He's uh, he, we have him listed at six foot five. So that's a healthy hack right there. Livingston Morris two and one the count. Yeah, you're up two and zero. Oh. If you're if you're Morris, you're not going to get cheated on anything on that pitch. No, and he's looking for his pitch to do damage with. I mean, you're talking about our home run derby winner this year, and it's a man that can put a ball over the scoreboard if he gets the right pitch. Oh, and he doesn't have one in a game. He did get here about a week before this, the, the home run derby and the all-star festivities, and he said he did one or two BPs, and they're like, yeah, you're in the home run derby. Yeah, I don't care that you just got here. We need you out there for the fireworks. Yeah, and, I mean, he made it entertaining. I, there wasn't a fan here that wasn't enthralled with how high and how far these balls were going. Three and one, a pitch two do damage on. Tried to on that one high and inside, swung through it. Counts full at three and two. This once again is where Ryan really needs to bear down here. Make a good pitch that obviously gives him a chance, but also gives his infield a chance to really get out and just keep this in the infield. He's had a strikeout in each of the first two innings. Won't get one here, but should record an out. High pop up. Judd's going back, called off by Hilbrick. Towards the second out, almost dropped in no man's land, but gets Livingston Morris a dangerous bat to pop out weekly. Yeah, and I don't know if Marcus lost that in the sky or if Chris couldn't see it either. It looked like there was a little confusion there as everyone kind of converged on one spot. Well, Judd is very aggressive from second base. He will travel far into the outfield until someone absolutely calls him off. Saw it a little bit on Thursday, but 
It's a nice job getting in there. You saw Chris Davis was on his horse. Some uh, That's the pitcher's worst nightmare, that ball that's just perfectly placed. Oh, yeah. Dixon heads to third, and Crump dropped it, didn't know where it was. Burl Davis gets the stolen base. He moves up to third. Yeah, and right here, I mean, there's where the runner advances on the pitch. It might have not been the same cycle, but we are seeing some of the same events throughout Ryan's innings right now. Well, and one thing about Ryan Mann is he does have that high leg kick, which if you can time up as a guy like Dixon, have the chance to steal. Fly ball to right field, he'll brick underneath of it. And the fifth third out of the game is the final out here in the third inning. The Mammoths threaten, but they do not score. So we'll head to the bottom of the third, but first we all have JJ the water boy in our DTE kid race against the mascot here on the USPBL network. See JJ getting, giving our umpire his water. He is a very good board. He's presented by Michigan First Credit Union. Let's throw it Jenny down Ray to Kara for our Kara kids race the mascot presented by They're DTE. Holding hands. They're going to help each other out today. Buzz has been Maybe struggling in our DTE kid versus the mascot race, so we're going to put him out there on second. Buzz, give a big old wave to the crowd. There he is. He's been having a tough time. So we're going to have these two boys step up to first base. Come up behind me right here. All right, I'm gonna count you guys down. You guys are gonna take off, ready? One, two, three, go! All right, quick work out of the gate, but they need your guys' help to get home. Let me hear you guys. There we go. All right, Tanner is slowly getting to Buzz. Here comes Beckett. Oh, Buzz is having a tough time, has to stop and take a breath. All right, Tanner, come get this high five, and here comes Beckett. Everybody give Beckett some big cheers right now. Come on, Beckett, it's a close one today. And Beckett's our winner. Good job, guys. It's all right, Buzz. It's the closest I've ever seen. You're getting better each day. All right, let's send it back up to Kevin now. When it's time for baseball, it's time for beer. Two-Hearted Ale has been named the number one beer in America for the past four years by members of the American Home Brewers Association. Play ball with the best, Two-Hearted Ale. The iconic American IPA from Bell's Brewery. Comstock, Michigan, please drink responsibly. 3 nothing. the West Side Woolly Mammoths on top of the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. It's been six up, six down for Chase Gearing in his US PBL debut. And well, he's made quick work of this Beavers lineup. Marcus Judd, Alex Crump, and Ben Wilcoxon will try to figure him out. Yeah, I mean, he has been lights out on the mound, right? As far as this game has gone. And I, I think the biggest thing is watching how he mixes his pitches up as he's going along right now. And one thing, it can work as an advantage or a disadvantage just depending on the day and, and who you are as a pitcher. But having batters that don't know what to expect, it's a little bit of a learning process for them as well. Yeah, and that's always the interesting part, especially when you get into the second half of the season, is when you guys start to roll in, nobody knows what to expect. Judd hits it hard into right field, but Dre Williams, Nelson on a beat, able to stretch out for it. And you talk about a frustrating outfield as Marcus Judd has a tip of the cap. You'll, you'll see a conversation with him in between games. I got a chance to learn a little bit more about Marcus, and we talked about how Baseball can imitate life, and sometimes you do things right, and it's not fair, and you should get a better result. It, I feel bad that it happened to Marcus, but that illustrated the point perfectly. Great swing, just you have two speedy guys in right and center field that take that hit away. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's been their defense this whole season, it has just taken away anything that's in the air. If it feels like it's down, or you feel like you're safe, you're just not. Alex Crump will try to figure something out. Quickly 0-2 as Chase Gearing has to feel like, like a million bucks right now. Yeah, I mean, welcome to the league, right? You, you find out what you really have behind you. There's no 
There's no amount of talk or hype that you can give their outfield that can express what they do on a weekend to weekend basis when we play. And he follows it up with a fastball, gets the swing and miss at 91. So you see that velocity was in the, the mid high 80s when he started. Now starting to get into the low 90s. He's ramping up a bit, getting in a groove. Yeah, he really looks comfortable out there. I think obviously the first inning you're you're trying to hit your spots. You're trying to do exactly what you need to do as the fastball comes in there at 89. I mean, you really start to see guys coming to their own once we talked about the pregame show. The adrenaline starts to slow down a little bit. and You really can get a control of your body. You can really be who you are as a pitcher. Counts 2-0, and, oh, and one of the reasons he's had success is he hasn't found himself behind in too many counts. Two balls, no strikes to Ben Wilcox, and had a nice game Thursday trying to follow it up. Wow, 2-0 breaking ball, puts it on the black. That's... You know you're feeling confident with your pitches when you throw that 2-0. Yeah, I mean, that's that'll show you right there that he knows what his bread and butter is. He knows how good his off-speed is, that he trusts it when he's behind and counts. Fastball fouled back. So from 2-0 to 2-2, two two, Chase Gearing is well, gearing up. Yeah, and as my old college coach said, you got to win the evens. Two balls, two strikes, all evened up, two away. Three-nothing game, we're in the bottom of the third. Heck, almost halfway through the first game of this doubleheader. Wilcoxon did use his one and only timeout. Gearing into the motion. Taken the other way. If that's fair, it's a hit, and it drops in right in front of Dre Williams Nelson. So Ben Wilcoxon didn't get all of it, but got enough of it to get the first hit of the day and at least make Chase Gearing pitch from the stretch for once. Yeah, and we'll see how he adapts here. I mean, this is what we talked about early on is how will he react once he gets somebody on and once he starts to get into a little bit of trouble. Obviously, defense is helping him out early, but this is where you start to see who somebody really is on the mound. Gearing punched out Davis looking his last time up. It was after, I believe, an eight-pitch battle. Yeah, that was one way to start a game. Yes. Punch out the league leader in average and tied for home runs. You believe he's second in walks right now. Top five in RBIs. Half-hearted hack at a pitch at the letters for strike one. Yeah, and I mean, the one thing that I'm really noticing early is he is not afraid to go after anybody. Now, that might just be a little bit of blindness to not knowing to who some of these guys are yet, but he's really just going after guys. Wilcox in the second, the throw. Oh, the tag would have had him, but Hussein couldn't hold on, and yeah, he, he put it bluntly doesn't know any better yeah <laughs> he doesn't know that maybe you don't people shouldn't attack chris davis like he has but he's had success with it and i think that might honestly catch chris a little off guard is you have a new guy and yeah the guy behind the plate knows exactly who you are and what you're capable of but the guy on the mound just says well i'm just gonna throw it in there what's right. the worst that can happen i know you're the leadoff guy and you bat left-handed yep <laughs> <laughs> and you have really long hair yes one ball, one strike. Pitch misses low and in. Two and one to Davis, a good hitter's count. Yeah, back-to-back -back hitters now. He's fell behind to where now he's really chasing to get ahead and put guys away like he was early on in the game. Gearing coming set, takes that deep breath. Misses away, three and one. Rudy Ramirez waits on deck should it get to him. And you feel like if the Beavers can just get one back in this inning, maybe they can try to turn the tides of this, this game. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it multiple times throughout the show today, but this inning is really the pivotal ending for the Mammoths. And Gearing will get out of it. Popped up in foul ground, and he gets a man on. Wilcoxon steals second, but he's stranded there. We're halfway through this six-inning game, 3 nothing. Westside Woolly Mammoths on the USPBL Network. There are things you can rely on in this world, like your dog being happy to see you, coffee getting you through the day, and the government changing business regulations. And when it comes to navigating those regulations, you can rely on Tryon and its team of attorneys. Tryon can also tackle time-consuming HR tasks like payroll and employee benefits, so you can stay focused on growing your business. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. We build, 
Roads, bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers, our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are Operating Engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Ryan Mann back on the mound, fourth inning of work, looking for back to back. Back to back shut out innings. He faces the bottom third of the West Side Woolly Mammoths order Garbasic, Beetle, and Seltzer. Man settled down a little bit, did get him up a leadoff single, then a ground out and a couple of weak pop outs got him out of the jam. Yeah, and this is where we talked about him starting to settle in, starting to put up zeros, so that way he can really keep his team in it. Because when and when it's games this short and you're just giving up, even if it's just one run per inning, it really starts to feel defeating if you guys aren't scoring and you're just getting one every inning that you're out there. Garbasic had a single that drove in Dre Williams Nelson his last time up. Leads off here in the fourth. Breaking ball. Drops in, caught a lot of the plate for strike one. Yeah, and that's that big breaking ball from that tall frame. I mean, that thing looks like it's just falling off a ledge. Looks like that knuckle curve is, follows it up with the fastball at 88, just a bit too high. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what his exact pitch count is at this point in the game, but this might be the point where we start seeing him get tired. Oh, and pitch count is at 55 today. <laughs> Our graphics team all over you have the pitch count you have the pitch clock in the bottom right corner yeah i feel fancy having the pitch clock on I here i know now. it's it's a nice luxury to have something that i mean you've dealt with it it feels like after the first month it's just everyone's adjusted pretty well to it yeah i i think it's always interesting when you hear about it at the big league level when they talk about that guys haven't adjusted to it yet or that it's still some like nuance thing when we're over halfway through the season as a whole no matter where you are so i think it's interesting to hear people talk about it for because for me when i go out there it's not even a thought i'm getting right. out there and most of the time unless i'm holding a runner on it's out within eight seconds garbasic works the walk second free pass surrendered by man Beetle swings the first pitch he sees. Hits a fly ball deep but playable to Hillbrick. Brings it in. One pitch is all he needs to retire the, mam the mammoth catcher. Yeah, solid contact, but just not enough to really get it out and get it moving. You see the flag blowing a little bit in center, but not much else or anywhere else really in the park today. Yeah, we don't usually get very strong gusts. I mean, you, we'll get a little stronger than that, as you see, just moving a bit, maybe even left to right, but... Not, we don't usually have those strong winds in any direction here at the USPBL. Yeah, and for a smaller park, I mean, it doesn't necessarily always play like it's as small as it is. I mean, you look at your standard corners, and it's normally 330. Seltzer hit it high. He didn't hit it far. Ortega brings it in, and after the leadoff walk, man able to retire the last two is, again, not a lot of movement. Not a lot of wind here on a hot, humid Saturday in downtown Utica. Yeah, and I can't imagine how hot it is out on the mound right now for Ryan. I mean, I've been out there in some of these Saturday day games, and when it is warm, it is warm. And these jerseys feel like they weigh 100 pounds. Well, he's got, got a button or two undone, maybe trying to get some airflow as Ward Hacklin comes up to the plate. Two for two, two singles, an RBI. He's been locked in in the leadoff spot. Yeah, and it's interesting seeing him in this leadoff spot. Normally you see uh, Jordan up here in the leadoff spot, but seeing this little switch seems to have done him well. That caught Hacklin. Didn't get him by much. Looked like it caught that tricep elbow area. He reaches for the third time. When Ward was hitting in the lower part of the lineup, usually lower third to start the season, Taylor Jelenkowski challenged him a bit and moved him up to first, second, just to see what he can get him. And Ward has responded in kind, and you've seen that batting average shoot up. Yeah, he's he's another one. I mean, 
we've talked about it multiple times, and I know you guys specifically up here have talked about it throughout the season, that one through nine in this lineup is just tough. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who it is. They, like, they could be in a, the worst slump of the season, and that is still a tough A-B. So it doesn't matter where a lot of these guys are in the lineup. They're just going out there to challenge pitchers to not make a mistake. Jordan Hussein up to bat, 0 for 2 today. He swings and fouls the 1-0 straight back. Runner on second, Alex Garbasek. Runner on first, Ward Hacklin. It's a walk and a hit batter. Ryan Mann trying to work through four as we start to get a little action in the Beaver bullpen. Hussein out in front, fouls it straight back. Yeah, and that's Jordan doing what Jordan always does, which is really just staying on pitches and making it tough for a pitcher to get something by him. He's not a huge swing and miss guy, especially on those pitches lower. He really does a great job of staying on them and making it a tough battle. Looks like Galindo warming up down the left field line. The one, two, popped up, perhaps playable. Crump on his horse, and he will catch it on the move to retire the side. A walk, a hit batter does not come back to hurt Ryan Mann. We are through three and a half, still three nothing mammoths here on the USPBL Network. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. The Dave and Buster's Method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and reset our life around zapping stuff and cheering for stuff with your friends. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. We're the financial champion of Michiganders. Whether you're a goal getter or dream chaser, an empty nester or up and comer, anyone in Michigan can bank with us. Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. Fans enjoying the game here at Jimmy John's Field and the fans enjoying the game at home wherever you're watching on the US PBL network. Uh, now, correlation does not always mean causation. Oh boy. But we get Carsey Walker in the booth and then I have my director, my producer telling me, hey, the numbers are up uh, uh, on the stream. The, the ratings are up. I'm just saying when it's me and Brendan or me and Alex or Alex and Brendan, I, I assume, the numbers aren't as great as when Carsey Walker blesses us with his presence <laughs> uh, on the microphone. So we have to thank you for that. You know, I, I'm happy to be up here, happy to try out something a little bit different, view the game from a little bit of a different side, watch Gearing just do his thing out here in his debut. And do his thing he has. He's faced 10 batters, has given up one single. He has struck out two, and he's thrown three scoreless innings, and he's ahead 0-2 on Rudy Ramirez. Yeah, and this is where we talked about him getting back to getting ahead of guys right here. It, this is exactly where he needs to be, comfortable out of the windup and trying to put guys away. Routine ground ball, and that retires Ramirez. Three pitches, all he needs. Second time Ramirez is grounded out, 5-3. I mean, that's as routine as routine comes. Three pitches, little rollover, and right across the diamond. J.D. Stubbs comes up to bat last time, flied out to left field. And there J.J. goes again. Always hard at work. <laughs> the hardest working person in the stadium, I possibly might add. At times, now, if you've never been to the U.S. PB, or to Jimmy John's field, home of the U.S. PBL, before the game, when fans are coming in, they'll have J.J. sit up on a table, almost displaying, like, here's the royalty <laughs> of Jimmy John's field, and everyone walks in. And, of course, the center of attention. Oh, what did I miss down here? He, he oh. lost something off his bat on the swing. I oh, might have lost it. Yeah, it looks like he lost, like, the pro hitter, the grip off his hand, I think. I saw something fly off. 
hitters and all their fun little toys. <laughs> Oh, one misses one and one. You'll get guys that are old school. They'll come up, no batting gloves. Just give me, give me a bat and I'll swing. And then you'll get guys elbow guard, shin guard. You know, adjust the batting gloves. Get a little different mix. Uh, not just here, but just in baseball in general. I mean, I'm looking at JD right now with no elbow guard, and I think that's the craziest thing, especially as velocity starts to increase just overall from professional baseball in general. I think that people are ridiculous for not wearing them just because that's such like a crazy spot that you're not protecting. There is not a lot of, uh, you're right, protection on that elbow as the fastball gets by Stubbs. 89 on the gun and Stubbs goes down for the third strikeout of the day for Chase Geary. Once again, just looks comfortable out there. It looks like he's in control of every single thing that's happening around him. And he looks like he trusts his defense, but he's also trying to put guys away on his own terms. Malik Bolin trying to oh, get a runner on in the inning. Flied out to center. His first at bat took a fastball the other way as the leadoff breaking ball misses away. I mean, just really solid off-speed pitching from Chase today. It's a pop-up on a fastball, heading over. Seltzer and he's called off by Williams Nelson and a very quick one, two, three inning. 47 pitches through four <laughs> innings for Chase Gearing as we head to the fifth. Three nothing mammoths on the US PBL network. quirky name. But here's the thing, 5 thirds equals 166.7%. So we put 166.7% into everything we do. Like automatically getting you your paycheck up to two days early. Giving you well-deserved extra time to avoid overdraft fees. And helping you borrow from your future self. This is banking a fifth third better. West side Woolly Mammoths are enjoying this one. They got out to an early lead and behind the pitching of Chase Gearing have held that lead. They will send up the meat of their order. Burl Dixon, Fox Liam and Livingston Morris. Three big figurative and literal bats coming up. They will face a new pitcher on the mound. Jesse Galindo comes out of the pen in relief, trying to keep the deficit right where it's at. Yeah, I mean, you're sending out the league leader in strikeouts right here. So this is a guy that you want to go out there and do what he does best, which is put guys away and close the door here. You don't want to let the Bamas get another run and really give your offense the best shot possible through these next couple of innings. Galindo, 33 innings of work. You're right, the strikeout number, 46 punch outs. ERA a little inflated at six. He's kept the walks down. That's the good side, is only 14 walks, but in 33 innings, he's given up 41 hits. So it's, those numbers don't usually add up. Usually those high strikeout guys get in trouble with the walks, not by giving up contact. Yeah, and usually if you see a lot of contact from a high strikeout guy, it usually tends to be large amounts of extra base hits. You usually see guys with high carry fastballs, talking about 20 plus vertical that are really leaving stuff up in the zone and hitters just happen to be on time and balls get out of the park. Galindo batting average against a 299. Yeah, it's a, he's a bit of an anomaly right now. Again, in the realm of the US PBL, 33 innings is a pretty big sample size, but in the bigger game of baseball, for a scout, 33 innings is not a lot of data really to look at. So if you throw another 70, get to 100 innings, that could even out over time. Yeah, and I mean, that's, we don't play as many games, obviously, as a major league season. 
So our sample size is always naturally going to be smaller, and that's up there. Yeah, Burl Dixon, a tough bat, pops out to shallow center field, and well, that's a good start, getting one of the most dangerous bats, not in the lineup, but in the league to pop out on one pitch. Yeah, I think Chris scared uh, Ben a little bit there when he came in, he kind of yelled in his ear. Well, that good for Chris because the center fielder needs to be, needs to command and make sure everyone communicates. I'd rather have that than a guy whispering, hey, mine might no. Yeah, you scared him a little, <laughs> but you made the play. Oh. Fox Liam comes up to bat, first pitch misses. Once again, I mean, we talked about it. Mammoth being literal and figurative. And this is another big guy up at the plate looking to do damage and get his team ahead here by a larger margin. Off speed called strike one and one. Jesse Galindo, he'll come with different arm slots in a five pitch mix. The four seam fastball, the curveball, the changeup, the two seam fastball, and the slider. So he'll mix up the arm slot, he'll mix up the pitches, and that's a reason why he gets a lot of swing and miss. Yeah, and that's, I mean, he's not a guy that's necessarily going to overpower you with speed like Ryan was earlier in the game. However, he is going to come at you at some different angles that a lot of guys don't really see in this league. And that's what's brought that strikeout rate to such a high level in here. Oh, and it, you don't see too many pitchers that utilize multiple arm slots within a game. So it, it's maybe a little harder for the batter to pick up the ball depending on, because you're looking at a different key every pitch. Yeah, and you really see that you'll normally go away, usually in high school, but like you'll see a few trickle through in college. You'll get some guys. I remember there was a guy for uh, Coastal Carolina way back when, when they were in the College World Series run that was through out of over the top, like a high three quarter and then almost submarine. Yeah, it's got to be tough for pitchers is the or for batters to pick it up. Liam works the walk, his second free pass today. So one on and one away. Here in the top of the fifth, three nothing Mammoths over the Beavers. Brady Beaton alongside Carsey Walker as Livingston Morris comes up to bat a strikeout and a pop out. Yeah, and once again, the, the probably the biggest Mammoth of them all yes. up at the plate. <laughs> looking to really extend this lead. And I think once again, the, the whole theme of today for the Beavers pitching staff has been not getting ahead and really right. like getting guys to get themselves out. They, we've gotten behind guys, and now we're just letting them kind of work themselves around the score. Well, both in the count and in the inning. The fifth inning was the first inning where the leadoff man did not reach. It went single in the first, walk in the second, single in the third, walk in the fourth. That puts you behind the eight ball, again, as we talked about, in the inning. Yeah, and I mean, especially when it becomes, like I said earlier, a cycle or a pattern throughout the game, it doesn't put you in the best spot to succeed. That's a big hack. Out in front, Livingston Morris, he was another player I got to talk to in between games. You'll see our interview. Talked with him about what he'd be doing if he wasn't playing. And he was actually very, very talented at another sport. And he told us a little bit about that. Make sure to stick on the broadcast between games to hear my conversation with Livingston Morris. He. Uh, He's a big guy, but he is a very gracious guy, and he's very fun to talk to. Yeah, and I know we had definitely had some uh, funny conversations about his possible other jobs if he wasn't yes, playing baseball. Yes, it is a wide range <laughs> of other jobs. He's a man of many talents. Yes, he is. Two and two. Swings and misses, and Galindo got him with the off speed. So Morris goes down. For the second time tonight on strikes, there's one on and two away as Dre Williams Nelson looks for his first hit of the evening. He's walked once and has come around to score. Yeah, and a guy that just looks comfortable when he's at, up at the plate. He just fits. He's got the swagger going on. You can see with the shades right there. I mean, it's just a guy that looks comfortable at the plate. Doesn't matter if he's 0 for 4 or 4 for 4. Dre Williams Nelson. When he played in the Angels organization, he played against an up-and-coming guy you may have heard of, Julio Rodriguez. <laughs> so he said when he got to play against him, he goes, okay, that guy's different. And then another guy you may have heard of one time down on rehab assignment with him, uh, a young man named Shohei Otani. Yeah. Well, he shared a clubhouse with for a short while. I'd say both of those guys are pretty different. 
<laughs> right. So he's uh, he's been around some very talented ball players, and hoping to get back into affiliated ball as the 1-1 one -one is a high chopper hit over to Stubbs, throws the first, Galindo covers, and we are out of the inning. Liam walks, but nothing more for the Mammoths. Beavers trying to get on the board, 3-0 here as we head to the bottom of the fifth. We're for people, the pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steadies. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. Yes, we're a bank, and some say our business is all about money, but that's an old idea. Because look past the money, and you'll see real human lives. We see it, because we're for people. Huntington, welcome. See the suites here at Jimmy John's Field right above us as we sit in the press box as they enjoy this game one of this doubleheader. So fans that come for the doubleheader, you get one, you get to sit for one ticket, you get two games out of it. And the West Side Woolly Mammoths and Chase Gearing are, well, hoping to get win number one and move them into first place. And Taylor Jelenkowski has to be thrilled from what he's seen from his new pitcher. Yeah, and I mean, you talk about fans getting two games for the price of one. Is I mean, you're getting one heck of a game out of Chase Gearing just coming, right. if you're coming for your first time here. Absolutely, he's given up one hit. The Wilcox and the only guy to get the hit is, yeah, you can see our booth, uh, this laptop is, yeah, yeah there's Carson <laughs> and I on, on the left side of your screen. <laughs> Little bit of us, uh, as we try to avoid the, <laughs> the camera as much as possible. <laughs> Ray Hilbrick leads it off as he watches ball one miss low. But yeah, Wilcoxon, he flared one the other way uh, on a two strike count. Besides that, Chase Gearing's been perfect. Yeah, and you watch Ray Hilbrick up here looking to do damage. And I mean, that is just a powerful swing out of him. That was probably one of the hardest hit balls off of Gearing so far today. And one of the most impressive things, besides some of the ice cream you can get here at Jimmy John's Field, that pitch count. Here in the fifth, that's pitch number 50. That's uh, it's pretty economical on the mound. Yeah, and I mean, we talk about him getting ahead of guys, and when he was doing that early, I mean, he was as efficient as it came. I mean, it, I think if you take out the one inning where he gave up the hit and had a couple runners on, I mean, I think he'd probably be less than 40 pitches right now with the way he's been pitching. He has been in a zone. Gearing, even the count up, two and two to Hilbrick. He did hit it hard, lined out to Liam. Almost misplayed it and left and was able to bring it in. Yeah, and Gearing just looks like he's in control of the zone. It looks like he knows kind of where his edges are. It's not like he seems like he's surprised by any misses from an umpire from where his catcher set up, it seems like he really just understands where the zone is. And a little frustrated right there as he gets, gives up the walk. First walk of the day surrendered by Gearing. The leadoff man on and on a six inning game, the Beavers don't have a lot of outs to work with to come back from this three run deficit. Yeah, and like, and two sides of it is one, it's only three runs. The other side, it's three runs. So right. you have to find either a way to make up for it because it isn't that large of a margin, or you really have to grind out here. And if you're gearing, stay tough because you have room to work with. Christian Ortega lined out hard, but right at Burl Dixon, his first time up. Ball one misses. That bullpen is quiet down the right field line for good reason, but gearing 
Maybe losing just a tick of the command as he comes back in the zone, evens it at one and one. Yeah, and I think if you're any of the Mammoth's coaches right now is you're putting all your trust in him. He's given up one hit, and yeah, unfortunate that he gave up the walk right there to start the inning, but he's been in control this whole time. I don't think they have any doubt of that whatsoever. Big breaking ball. Started on the inside part of the plate, ended up well outside. Yeah, and that's just, I mean, I said it earlier today, but he is just, everything that he throws is moves a ton. I mean, you can see it just on the broadcast alone. I mean, yeah. right there, just blows it by him, though. You get that fastball, comes in at 87. The pitch before looked like a slider-type pitch, 15 inches of horizontal break. Yeah, and that's about right where you want to be. I mean, you want to be anywhere from that 15-plus range to really kind of get a hitter off of something because once you get a little less than that, it starts to become more cutterish and starts to be a lot more identifiable to a hitter. Fastball blew it by Ortega. Gets the fourth strikeout of the day, one on, one away. Marcus Judd comes up to bat. He had extra bases robbed from him by Dre Williams Nelson his last time up. Yeah, and right here, if you're gearing, you really just want to try to get your double play ball and get out of here and just stay in an economical place, like you said. I mean, we're at 58 pitches right now. Yeah, that's, if he can get out of this without too much trouble, probably will come out for the sixth. As the first pitch to Judd is a called strike. Not the best double play candidate, however. He's got some wheels from the right side. Yeah, no, Marcus can definitely move. I mean, you're talking about a guy that could cover almost the whole right side of the infield on his own at times. 0-1, fouled away. That basically, Judd's gonna have to hit it right at somebody to get at that double play ball. Yeah, I mean, he just gets down the line so fast. I mean, it's just one big blur when he takes off. I mean, he moves so quick. Runner on first, Ray Hilbrick. He worked a walk to lead off the inning. Gearing settles in, delivers. Hilbrick going down to second, check swing. He broke the plane, throw way off target. So runner in scoring position, but an 0-2 count to Marcus Judd. Actually, a punch out. Oh, excuse me, yes, that was the punch out. Egg on my face, excuse me. <laughs> It looked like a, a defensive swing where they wanted to give Hillbrick a little bit more time to get to second, but on an 0-2 count, I maybe just fooled Judd, but back-to-back -back punch outs for Gearing. Yeah, and you talk about Gearing stuff moving so much. I mean, it can be so deceiving to a hitter. Could have thought that he was taking a defensive hack, kind of protect Hillbrick from just a fastball and being a straight throw down that now he was trying to give him a shot and unfortunately ends up being an off speed and he breaks the plane. The stretch has not hurt gearing. Sometimes guys will get comfortable in that wind up and switch to the stretch, maybe throws them off, not chase. He has been, well, unfazed. He has been locked in and you're right, been steady Eddie the whole way through. Yeah, and I think that's the, the most impressive part is you've come into a new environment, obviously, Played at a little bit higher level. He might have been used to some fans in some different environments here. Ooh. I think he got him on the hand there, though. It's hard to tell. I think it hit the I think it hit the arm, then the bat. I think they're going to award him first. But yeah, I thought I saw the home plate umpire pointing. I'll say if it didn't hit him, Crump did a heck of a job selling it. Yeah. If it didn't. But if that did hit him, that's the last spot you want to be hit, especially if it's on that left hand. I mean, that's that's what he's got to use the majority of the game for him. So John Dombrowski talking with the home plate umpire. I don't know necessarily what that was about, but the tying runs at the plate. Ben Wilcox in the man with the lone hit today comes up to bat. Runners on first and second. It was a walk and a hit batter. There is some action in the Mammoth bullpen. Looks like we have double barrel action. Yeah, and I feel like it's more precautionary right now, right? You've got two outs. He's a pitch away from getting out of it. Right here, he's just got to get back in, do what he's been doing this whole game up until this point, really just get himself out of a jam here. Then he can go in and the Mammoths can make their decision from there. Wilcoxon 
Fouls that one away, one and one. And obviously you bring up tying run being at the plate, but this isn't a huge power guy here. Nope. No home runs on the season, only four RBIs uh, on the year, but a guy that his average 268 and climbing. So if you can just get a base hit, get one across, just maybe try to build that momentum, turn the lineup over. Yeah, and also not a big walk guy either. I mean, you're talking about 22 hits to six walks. So he's not necessarily taking a ton of walks. I mean, you see some guys in the league that have 18 plus walks. And so looking at him, this is gonna be a ball that he's gonna try to put in play here. Cause he also was the first one to get a hit this game too. Three and one the count as Chris Davis waits on deck. And I have to imagine this is, could be what the conversation is about. Hey, attack Wilcoxon because you do not want to load the bases with Davis coming up. I know you've struck him out and gotten him to pop out, but that's not a situation I want number eight coming to the plate with. Yeah, and I think the, the biggest conversation here is, hey, giving you a breather, just want you to take that second, process what's going on right now, and let's go get back in the zone. Because you're, once again, a pitch away from getting out of it. Hitters more times than not, will get themselves out and from a pitcher standpoint you've really just got to put something over the plate and let whatever happens happen three and one runner on second hillbrook runner on first crump pitch all the way counts full now you have runners in motion once again i noticed him just kind of staying away from wilcoxon just staying on that outer half not letting him get anything to his pull side so i'll be intrigued to see if he goes challenge pitch here or if we start to see that off speed that he's been trusting all game. Wilcoxon did go the other way for his the lone hit for the Beavers today. Payoff pitch. Just missed that low outside corner. Third free pass of the inning. Tying run on base. Go ahead run at the plate Chris Davis. Yeah, and you're gonna see a coach come out here and have a conversation right now. See exactly what's gonna happen here and see if we're gonna make a move to the bullpen here or if we're gonna leave Gearing in and let him finish his own game right now. Well, the Mammoths do not have a lefty in the pen. And it looks like that might be the end of the day for Gearing. He shakes the hand of Taylor Jelenkowski and well, he is responsible for those three runners, but if the bullpen can help him off, that's a heck of a start to his US PBL career. So when we come back, Hab will be on the mound for the Mammoths. Three, nothing. They try to hold on to the lead here on the US PBL Network. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. How do these business owners find the time for peace of mind? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon.
Jonathan Hab on the mound facing Chris Davis, 3-0. In the bottom of the fifth of a six-inning game, first pitch to Davis, 93 at the knees for strike one. Yeah, I mean, really attacking the bottom of the zone right there just to start. I mean, bringing a heater and just going right at him. Hab, fastball again, same spot, 93 at the knees quickly, 0 and 2. Hab came out and is not messing around with him. He wants to put the situation away right here, right now. Base is loaded, nowhere to put Davis. It's a ball in the gap, could tie this up. Right, he settles in the 0-2. Strike three, call. Got him looking. Out of the pen, three pitches. Habs fired up, and he should be. He strands the bases loaded, and we'll head to the six. Three nothing mammoths here on the US PBL Network. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. Jonathan Hab is locked in. <laughs> he is focused. He's excited. He struck out Chris Davis on three straight pitches. And I think that was the same look he had on the mound. Yeah, I mean, he is just stone cold right now. I mean, you see just emotionless once he got back in the dugout right there. He knew exactly what he wanted to do and came out and executed to a T. I mean, two pitches when you look at the TrackMan report right at the bottom of the zone. Stone Cold is a good way to put it. I mean, it was 93, 93, 92, living on the edges. That was that was a heck of a sequence to get out of a very sticky situation, a very tough situation. And he came out and he was deadly focused. Yeah, and I mean, now this is where the Mammoths get to do what they've been trying to do all game, which is just extend this lead a little bit more, put the nail in the coffin here in the top of the six. Three nothing Mammoths as it is the bottom third of the order, Garbasic, Beetle, and Seltzer. Galindo gets the swing and miss on Garbasic, 0 and 1. Yeah, and I mean, once again, just mixing up the arm angles, mixing up the approach height from where he releases each pitch. Garbasic yet to be retired as he waves and misses at the 0 and 1. Singled in a run his first time, up, walked last time. Yeah, now he takes his time out here, trying to just gather, kind of throw Galindo off of his kind of rhythm that he's on right now. I have noticed a lot of guys tend to use it when it gets to two strikes and they're down in the count. That's when it's mostly used that one time out. Yeah, from personal experience, every time that I, for the most part, get guys 0-2 after two pitches, they usually try to take it, kind of give themselves a breather because it just, for them, the game starts to speed up, so you have to slow me down right. as a pitcher and they have to slow themselves down as well. One and two. Galindo delivers, strike three called. Four pitches, all is needed to dispatch of Alex Garbasek. Yeah, I mean, just got him looking, froze him right there on the inside corner and just put him away. Zach Beadle up to bat. 0 for two, a strikeout and a flyout as Galindo came out of the pen and well, was retired four of the five batters he's faced. Yeah, and kind of looking at Galindo's body language. He just looks ready to go up there. He's like, get in the box and let's do this. He looks calm, but you're right, ready. First pitch to Beetle. Ooh, had him chasing that one lone away. That's a big swing and a miss right there. Really just, 
think he was sitting heater on that one. It just looked like he was just going no matter what right there. You have to be swinging heater. On, I mean, that one had him fooled. He was sitting dead red. Turns on one. Oh, takes a tough hop. Ortega oh my. over to Wilcox and almost it gets away from Stubb. The throw to second goes oh into my. the outfield. He'll keep it's running. Tana. Beetle to third. Is he going He's home? going for the little league home run. The throws up the line. And Zach Beetle, 360 feet. He's out of breath, but he makes it four nothing mammoths. And we have backyard baseball brought to you by the USPBL right there. <laughs> there were about two times I thought, uh oh, Beetle's going to record an out and he just kept running. Someone get that man some oxygen. <laughs> he is, he's excited, but he's I want to know. catch his breath. I want to know the last time that he had to sprint all the way around the bases like that. Right. Because there's not many times in your career you get the no. opportunity to do that after you're a kid. Yeah, see, all right, they got, they <laughs> got, got him the a water. water. <laughs> they got him a water, good. But of course you got Hab smiling now after this, the stone cold expression we saw <laughs> at the beginning of the inning. All right, uh, that's going to be a tough one to put in the scorebook. What I am going to put down now is the run score <laughs> as Col Colby Seltzer comes up to bat. I don't even know if that counts technically as a single. I think it counts as an error. Yeah, well, the first bounce was tough. There's no way Ortega gets the error, but it goes over to Wilcox, and it was hard to tell if he had the play or not. So it would have been a 5-6-3 put out had the play been made. Uh, you'd have to go back and look. And to those that have the benefit of instant replay, you can go back and slow everything down. But in real time, it was just one of the more chaotic plays we've had here at Jimmy John's Field. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have replay here. I wish we had the ability to use that in professional baseball. But that is not to our benefit as he strikes out there and is not happy about it. Well, how about Galindo? He gives up a little league home run. Nothing really that was his fault. And what does he do? He comes back and sets Seltzer down on three straight pitches. I like that response. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, knowing that that's an error right there going into that, it's an unearned run. So for him, he feels like he's had no damage done. He did what exactly what he needed to do, which was get himself a ground ball to get out. And unfortunately, it didn't work out that way for him. Now, Ward Hacklin has done what he's needed to do. Two singles and was hit by a pitch. Yet to be retired today. Been wonderful out of the leadoff spot. The 0-1 misses away with the off speed. I think his approach just looks so much better out of this leadoff spot right now. He looks like he's in control of the box. He looks like he's going after pitches that he wants and not extending himself, chasing after things that you would possibly see him go after from time to time. Tardy on the challenge fastball. Count goes to one and two. Baseball, it, 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 it's cliche, but it's cliche for a reason. It's such a mental game. So if you can find the right approach for a guy, you can see his numbers go up. Yeah, and I mean, you're watching Ward just, I mean, a two for two day right now with a hit by pitch as well. I mean, he's doing everything that's been asked of him so far in this leadoff spot. Scored a run, stole a base, filling up the stat sheet. The two, two. Right down Broadway for strike three. So a run scores, but Galindo strikes out the side. Beavers need four in the bottom of the sixth. You're watching the US PBL Network. Fifth Third Bank. Yeah, it's a quirky name. But here's the thing, five thirds equals 166.7%. So we put 166.7% into everything we do like automatically getting you your paycheck up to two days early, giving you well-deserved extra time to avoid overdraft fees, and helping you borrow from your future self. This is banking a fifth third better. How do these business owners find the time for peace of mind? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com.
almost done with game one of this twin bill. The younger fans settled in. And well, it will be up to Jonathan Hab to slam the door on the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. A four to nothing lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Rudy Ramirez, JD Stubbs, Malik Poland, the three Beavers that will attempt to extend this game. Yeah, and I mean, tough part of the order to come up against if you're Hab, but also after what you just did there to end that last inning in a pinch, I mean, there's nobody better to face that part of the lineup for them right now. Rudy Ramirez, a pair of ground outs to third. Yeah, really looking to break through for his team here in a big moment. I mean, they have to do everything possible here to make Hab work. First pitch fastball misses low and last inning he got out of the jam so quickly I didn't even get to tell you the the repertoire he comes with out of the pen. So have has that forcing fastball which we, we saw him place beautifully last half inning a slider a curveball and a changeup. Yeah and there you saw the big fastball there again right at 91 up in the zone. Got a foul tip and then you you really just see him utilize his fastball he's going to challenge you and you have to respect it as a hitter, but you also have to execute because he's going to give you pitches to execute on. And five pitches, five fastballs. It's got that, it's a very spinny fastball and it's got that rising kind of action to it. Yeah, and that's, I mean, he just has such a big fastball that he's able to use it in all parts of the zone. Normally you don't see high carry guys throw at the bottom of the zone, but when you watched him come out against Chris there, I don't think Chris was ready for it at the bottom of the zone. 92 on the black. He is he is locked in a Georgia Gwinnett product. Shocker <laughs> with how many Gwinnett guys are here. And he has been fantastic. One, two, and some contact on the fastball. Caught a lot of the plate, but Ramirez states alive. Yeah, and, I mean, you talk about him being from Georgia Gwinnett. Being an NAI guy myself, you know the type of guys that come from there. They're built on a winning culture. They're built right. to be exactly what Hab is right now. He's a competitor. He's going to go out there, and he's going to give you everything he got every time. Ramirez fouls off another fastball, so all seven pitches have all been heaters. Excuse me, all eight. But baseball, maybe more than any other sport, Obviously, the higher levels have a higher ratio of talent, but you get guys coming from all different levels around the country. First off speed we see, and Diesel adds an error to his scorebook. <laughs> He's upset with himself. Yeah, and you see him just shake his head a little bit. I think he knows, as we all know, Diesel defenders, he, uh, <laughs> he, he knows he should have had that one. Played himself into a tough hop. Yeah, yeah. You got to go get the short hop sometimes. 1-2 once again to Ramirez. Fastball a little too low, about shin high. Yeah, and I think the craziest part is we're seeing so many fastballs out of Hab right now, and I don't even think that's his best pitch. I think that curveball that he has in his back pocket might be one of his better pitches. When that fastball is moving like it is today, ride it as the 2-2 two -two fouled away. Yeah, and I think starting to see it a little bit more here. Obviously, when he came out to end the last inning, you just saw three straight fastballs, right. and he said, we'll see you later. But looking at it now, I mean, he's really trying to get guys off this teeter right now and see if he can put somebody away here. Eighth pitch of the, excuse me, ninth pitch of the at-bat. 2-2. Two -two. Back up the middle, smoked into center field. Base hit for Rudy Ramirez, and after rolling over a couple earlier in the game, that has to feel good for the Beavers DH. Yeah, and I mean, 97 off the bat, that's just, that's a damage swing right there. He knew what he, what he was getting, he went right after it. Anytime it comes back faster than it went in, that means you, you had a pretty good swing as a batter. And I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think he knew what he was getting and he just knew he had to be on time. Stubbs puts it in the air, perhaps playable, no. Garbasic knew his own limitations and lived to fight another pitch. Yeah, yep. He, he saw where that one was going and he didn't want to go test the wall. 
Be curious how they work JD here and see if they work him with a little bit more off speed or if they keep hammering fastballs against them. Well, they can challenge. They're up four, so even a long ball, you still have a two run lead. So you have a little bit of leeway there. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants the two ball, the long ball added to their uh, stat sheet from the night. Right. But you don't have to pick the corners and you don't have to be as careful. Obviously, the ground ball and the double play is what you're looking for. And pick oh, off. Oh, and ben he got Ramirez him. Ramirez got him. Caught him on the in between hop. And Ramirez has a nice swing, but has to take that long walk back to the dugout. Yeah, and you're watching. I mean, Habs just once again doing it all. I mean, he is in control out there. Now he's just got one job, and it's trying to put J.D. Stubbs away. Well, one ball, one strike, and now you can really challenge Stubbs. Yeah. The 1-1, one, one, fouled straight back, 1-2. and two. And that is a momentum killer. I mean, you get the leadoff man on. Obviously, you still have work to do, but you feel a little momentum. You get picked off in that situation, and it's a little deflating in that dugout. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, that's just the one thing you want to try to avoid, right? Is you finally get a guy on, you're starting to build that momentum, and all of a sudden, we don't have a runner on anymore. Two balls, two strikes. Set the pitch. Jack swing. Ooh, yes, he did. He went around, but that might help Stubbs as he reaches on the wild pitch. So a strikeout for Hab, but Stubbs reaches, got away from Beetle. Yeah, and you're watching Beetle right now, obviously bent over grabbing his stuff, but he was hobbling there a little bit. He wore it, went off that uh, swing and a miss. I think he just got a little bit of him in the thigh there. It's like the inner part of the thigh. I will always tip my cap to catchers. They take one heck of a beating back there, and that could not be me. And it, it's felt like maybe it's just because I've been here a lot, and when you watch every game, you notice. But it feels like there was a stretch where the catchers were just, didn't matter who you were, just foul ball after foul ball catching you in an odd spot. Catchers were getting beat up for a while. Yeah, there was a good week there where we didn't have – Either of our catchers, actually, uh, we had both that were on the IL. And so we were just trying to make something work at that right. time. Bowling up to bat, runner on first, one away. Trying to pass the baton to the next guy here in the bottom of the sixth. Oh, one misses below the knees, one and one. Reminder, we'll have Carol Wolfbauer with our player of the game following the conclusion and then had a chance to sit down with Livingston Morris and Marcus Judd. One mammoth, one beaver. Get to know the, the guys behind the ball player a little bit in between games. So make sure to stay right here on the USPBL network. And then before you know it, we'll be back for game two. Yeah, and I think it's going to be a great two interviews. I mean, you got two guys with two very different stories that are both right. great players in this league. Absolutely. Very gracious to take time out of their warm-up routine as Bolin pops it a mile in the air, shallow center field, and Hussein traveled a long way to make that play. There's two away in the bottom of the sixth. Beavers down to their final out. Shuffled his way all the way around the outside of the infield to go get that one. Had some so of that, that, that odd spin, just kept pushing it. Seltzer said, I'm getting out of here. He ran all the way back to second base and wanted no part of that. He said he called it, he's the shortstop, go ahead. Down to Ray Hilbrick. Lined out and worked a walk. Had some nice swings tonight. Strike one. 90 on the gun. And it feels when he, like when he gets ahead, he's just painting the corners right now. Oh and one. We see one and one now with the miss. Well, 
looks like Hab taking a moment to himself, a little discomfort. As Hab takes a moment. And it looks like he's just catching the breather. I saw him kind of tap his chest there. I think he might have just oh, lost the, a little the, bit of air. Catcher. Oh. Yeah, that's what I missed. It was Beetle that got caught. Oh, yep. So the pitcher doing right by his catcher as Hilbrick turns on one into the gap. No one getting there in time and we'll go station to station with Stubbs and Hilbrick. Get the single, only the third hit for the Beavers in this contest. Passes the stick along to Christian Ortega. 0 for 2 at the punch out today. Yep, now they're starting to string it along here. You're starting to see the lineup start to come alive. Hopefully it's not, for their sake, too late. Obviously, if you're have, you're just trying to damage control here, trying to keep it as low as possible and possibly keep the shutout put together. And this is where and why it drives managers crazy. Down four runs getting picked off at first is the killer of the momentum because now thinking base is loaded with one away, you're sitting, sitting pretty, but have to have a short memory in baseball. There's going to be another game to be played in about 30 minutes. Yeah, and I think that's the toughest part of these double headers is you have to have that bounce back mentality. It doesn't matter if you went 0 for 3 in the game prior. It's a whole new game. You obviously don't get the reset of going day to day, right. but you have that 30 minutes to really look back at what happened and make your adjustments going forward. 1-1, one, one, chopper foul. Beavers down to their final strike. Jonathan Hab trying to slam the door. Right here, all you're hoping for is something easy on the ground or just put him away with the punch out, your Hab. The one, two. In the air, but not playable. Yeah, I don't think Livingston's getting to that one. Tie and run stands in the on deck circle right now would be represented by Marcus Judd, but we have to get to him first. Chase Gearing went four and two thirds inning of spectacular baseball. And Jonathan Hab out of the pen has been wonderful as well. Ready, come set delivers. This is low, couldn't get Ortega to fish. Yeah, he thought about it. You saw that little flinch with the shoulders there like you wanted to go, but how ended up pulling up? And as a pitcher, when you see that flinch, you know you have him at least thinking about it, right? Yeah, you had him thinking at least that it was something that it wasn't. They obviously recognized it early enough to be able to kind of pull themselves back and stay off of it, but you just see the pitch right there, and he went right back to it. And he gets the swing and miss. And the Mammoths take game one, four to nothing. The combined shutout from Chase Gearing and Jonathan Hab. Heck of a performance from those two. And they, they hit well enough in the victory. Had RBI hits from Ward Hacklin, from Alex Garbasek. Had the Little League home run with Zach Beadle. Burl Dixon drove in a run as well. And a four nothing win and the Mammoths now on top by a half game before the second game of this doubleheader. Yeah, and I think we talked about the keys to the game very early on, which was them scoring early and then maintaining that lead early. They did both of those things and were able to hold on for the rest of the game. So the stats don't lie. They did exactly what was predicted of them. They can tell a story and well, they were correct tonight. Carol Wolfbauer standing down on the field trying to grab Chase Gearing and Again, what a debut, four and two thirds inning. At the end, he got just a hair wild. He walked two, hit one, gave up just one hit, had tallied five strikeouts. So he was wonderful in his mammoth debut. I'm sure Taylor Jelikowski is all smiles right now. And Kara is settling in, just getting ready, and in a moment, we'll send it down. And remember, after Kara's interview, we'll send it to the two interviews I had with Marcus Judd and Livingston Morris. Won't want to miss it. And like I said, before you know it, we'll be back here for game two. But a wonderful performance by the righty, 
Chase Geary. Yeah, I mean, once again, like we said, what a great performance out of him in his debut. You couldn't ask for much more out of him. The Nickel State product, a local boy from Troy. So coming back home and performing pretty well, and let's send it down to Carol Wolfbauer. Kevin, I'm here with our Gone to Dust player of the game, Chase Geary, and you just saw him on the mound tonight for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. So Chase, you went just over four innings today with five strikeouts. Now, you are new to the league. This is your first game here with us. So what did you hear from your teammates, scouting report-wise, on how to face off against an effective offense with the Beavers? Um, just trust my stuff, fill up the zone and compete, and um, my guys on defense got my back, obviously. So, um, yeah, just really going out there and be myself. Don't try to do anything that, you know, I'm not used to. And um, after I threw the first pitch, I, I was like, okay, here we go. So um, from there, it was just attack the zone, fill it up, and um, give my team the best chance to win. Yes, and that deep breath worked, only gave up one hit tonight. So it's great to see you out on the mound. Now, he is actually a native of Michigan from Troy, so pretty close by, but went away for college. So what's it like to be back in your home state now playing professional baseball? Um, awesome. Um, I get to have all my family and friends that haven't got to come see me throw uh, in college. So to have them out here tonight and um, um, just a special, special feeling and to go out and have the day I did, so um, very thankful and excited for, for what's to come. So. Well, congratulations on having a great game today and a great first outing. We look forward to seeing you the rest of the season. Once again, this is Chase Gearing, our Down to Dust player of the game. Congratulations, Chase, and player. <laughs> stay tuned to see our players in game number two. I'm Kara Wolfbauer. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thanks, Kara. And yeah, it has to feel good pitching in front of friends and family. Nickel State is a long ways away from Michigan, so getting to return to your home state and really right by your hometown and perform like you did, he, he's all smiles and for a good reason. Yeah, I mean, you can't ask for much more than that. Pitching in front of your family in professional baseball is one of the best feelings. You have so much pride and they are so proud of you because it takes a lot to get to this moment. USBBL may not be the MLB, but it's it's a step in the right direction, and I don't think people can always understand how proud families are of their kids and how proud you have to be of yourself to be out here every day working as hard as you can. Validation of a lot of hard work. Mammoths take game one, four to nothing over the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. Game two will be in about a half hour. But again, stay right here. A couple interviews with Marcus Judd, with Livingston Morris, and a whole lot of other fun things until game two starts. I'm Brady Beaton for my partner, Carsey Walker. We'll see you in about a half hour.
slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. There are many things you can rely on in this world, like a sunny day brightening your mood, your mom baking the world's best apple pie, and never a dull moment in running your business. And when it comes to time-consuming HR tasks, you can rely on Tryon. Tryon can handle payroll and taxes, employee benefits, and more, so you can stay focused on attracting and retaining the best talent. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. How do these business owners find the time for peace of mind? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with Tryon, one of the nation's top professional employer organizations, provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and its team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Throughout your life, from big moments to ones well-earned, we're your financial guardian angel. Alliance Catholic Credit Union. You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast, and so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by Featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Coppersfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. Welcome back to the USPBL Network. I'm Brady Beaton, joined right now by the West Side Woolly Mammoths, Livingston Morris, the 2023 Home Run Derby champion. So congratulations on that. You seem to have a lot of fun with that. Thank you, yeah. I had a lot of fun. It was nice being in front of all the fans, make myself known. Only been here a week at the time, but yeah, I had a whole lot of fun. And it seemed like the fans, especially some of the younger ones, really, they all love the long ball. So I'm sure they enjoyed seeing you and interacting with you a little bit on the Home Run Derby during All-Star Weekend. Right, yeah. I like hitting the long ball. They like watching the long <laughs> ball. So yeah, it was a good time for everybody. So you came this way. Um, by the way, you were in another league, got here. What's your experience been like in Utica, and how have you enjoyed Jimmy John's Field? Wow. So I've only been here for maybe a little, like three weeks, give or take. And so far, so great. Like, I like the guys on the team. I like the guys in the league. They got to stay in apartments right now, and that's really nice. It's a hookup. And then just, I've been around Macomb, Sterling Heights. Mm. Everywhere I've been so far is really nice. Eventually, I get into Detroit, but. Right has the, it's a little bit of a different setup than your traditional independent league. Yeah, obviously you have four teams, but there's a little bit of camaraderie. You're not necessarily going against one another. I mean, some guys live with other players. Right. What's that been like being in the USPBL and a little bit of a unique setup? Wow. 
So, I mean, I came from the Pioneer League, and even on your same team, you didn't really talk to all the guys, let alone other teams on, in the same league or different divisions or anything. But when you come here, not only are the guys in your clubhouse cool, all the guys from all the other three teams, they're all, we're all cool with each other. We all talk, play around in the field, talk to each other during that bats. Like, we're all, we're all buddies here. Let's learn a little bit more about Livingston, the person. You were telling me before we started, if you weren't in baseball, you'd have a few different paths you wanted to go. Tell the fans at home where you thought you were going to go, and now that you've grown up a little and had a little more life experience, where you think you might end up doing after baseball. So out of college, I got my marketing degree, and then I was like, hey, if baseball gets cut short, I'm just going to law school. You got to go that avenue, go like the school route. But then... Now, kind of like being a little bit older, I feel like I like being outside a little bit more. I like doing things with my hands. I like just interacting with people on a daily basis rather than being in an office all day. So, like maybe blue collar, military, that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. The first thing a lot of people notice about you, and I'm sure you've gotten this for a long time, is you are a pretty large human. Right. You are pretty big. You were telling me, I asked you if you played any sports, and it wasn't necessarily the answer I expected. You ha were pretty good at track growing right. up, specifically the javelin, which that's not a lot of a uh, sport that a lot of people have a background in. Tell people right. about your time in Georgia, throwing the javelin and having the success with it. So growing up, I always did USA track and field, the New Balance Nationals, um, just like all the trials and everything. What set state records all the way growing up. Um, yeah, national champion a few times. But for me in track, it just wasn't as fun as baseball. I didn't get to have a team atmosphere. It was just you competing against yourself. And I feel like baseball is the right path for me. Well, we're glad to have you here. And yeah, well, it certainly seems like you made the right choice with watching you out there. Uh, good luck the rest of the season. Thanks for taking a little time to talk with me. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Livingston Morris of the West Side Woolly Mammoths. We'll take a short break when we come back. Uh, Marcus Judd of the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers here on the USPBL Network. At Ascension Michigan, we're committed to being your first choice for healthcare. Our nationally recognized heart program is the leader throughout Michigan in minimally invasive heart valve procedures. For joint replacement, spine, and cancer care, patients choose our specialists for advanced care and treatment. And we also excel in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. the financial champion of Michiganders. Whether you're a goal getter or dream chaser, an empty nester or up and comer, anyone in Michigan can bank with us. Michigan Schools and Government Credit Union. We're for people, the pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steadies. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. Yes, we're a bank, and some say our business is all about money, but that's an old idea. Because look past the money, and you'll see real human lives. We see it, because we're for people. Huntington, welcome.
bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers, our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are Operating Engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. Welcome back to the USPBL Network. Now joined with the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, Marcus Judd. Marcus, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time before this doubleheader tonight to, to let the fans get to know Marcus a little more. Thank you. I truly appreciate that. So first, I'll just start off something easy. How's your time been at the USPBL? How have you enjoyed Utica, Michigan and Jimmy John's Field? Uh, it's been a heck of an experience for sure. Um, one thing that I've noticed that's different than anywhere I've ever been baseball-wise is definitely the environment here you know, um, kids and families, environment, but especially the players, coaches. Right. Every single person in this league, from from someone who's a cook all the way to some of the best player in the league, everyone wants to see you succeed, and that's what truly makes this place special. Yeah, it's a little different than the traditional independent yeah. scene where you yeah. spread out through four or five states, right, you don't right. have the 12-hour bus rides. That's, that's also And right, yeah. you have that camaraderie with some guys that maybe don't wear the same uniform, uniform as, you. as you. Right, exactly, exactly. And um, a lot of the coaches, if you want to get extra work, you go and work out with another team. Mm -hmm. And it's all about how do we progress yourself as a ball player and a teammate who's or a guy from another team that doesn't necessarily uh, want you to beat their team right. will still be there to help you regardless. And that's Ab what's really special. Absolutely. And Jimmy John's feels a pretty fun atmosphere. Yes. It seems like all the fans really enjoy it. And you guys are a big part of the reason, the interactivity between you and players. And you have a little special tradition you do when, when the kids come up and start talking to you. Tell the fans, uh, when the first kid that comes up to you, they get a little something special, don't they? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, a lot of the times I'll have the first kid who acts for my signature, I'll have them sign the inside of my hat. Um, because I remember what it was like being that kid in the stands, right. begging for a signature, but still knowing that he's at work and he's at a job. Right. You know? but, um, it, it gives gives them something to to look forward to not just the baseball game but understand that we're still human and that they can be in this position one day too if they're willing to put in the work and effort well I, you just see every time a camera catches a kid that gets a foul ball mm -hmm. or someone's mm -hmm. signing an autograph they get so excited they're running back to their parents it really is that that moment that can absolutely. can make a kid summer mm -hmm. absolutely because that at the end of the day they're the future of the game whether you whether you like it or not, not the guy that's that's the new upcoming prospect, but the kid who who wants to one day have a dream of playing professional baseball in front of fans. Absolutely. So you obviously baseball, yes, sir. pretty good at it. You were pretty good at some other sports growing up as well. Tell the fans at home that you were not only successful, but you had maybe could have taken a different path and played college sports in a couple other areas. Yes, yes. So I um, I ran indoor track. I wasn't mm. the fastest guy on the planet, of course, <laughs> um, but I had some success there. Um, my, my secondary sport was football, though. Right. Um, I was very passionate about it since I was eight, like eight or nine, all the way up through uh, high school, actually being recruited by private schools and some right. universities, up until I decided to uh, take the path of baseball. I felt it, it, fitted, it fitted my future a little mm -hmm. bit more, and um, here we are now. All right, is there anything else that you want the fans at home to know about Marcus Judd? Anything, any fun facts, or just something that, again, that humanizes you a little more? Um, yeah, the, everyone has a different journey, mm -hmm. and um, I've come to notice that, and that 
you can do everything right in the sport, in life, and it may not work out. Right. But you appreciate and be present in every moment, whether that's at the plate, whether that's having a conversation with you during mm -hmm. this interview, or spending time with loved ones. It's important to still be present because you never know what can happen, and you never know what doors are going to open for you in the future. And that's why I think so many people that have been involved in sport love it so much because it, it really does refre reflect life to Absolutely. a T. I mean, especially baseball. I mean, how many times do you square one up, do everything Thing right? right. And Burl Dixon steals, steals it in the, it outfield, in the outfield, or you, mm -hmm. the pitcher just throws the glove up and catches mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't have done anything differently, but you just don't get the result. Results. And conversely, mm -hmm. sometimes you get a little lucky. You miss hit one, and right. hey, you beat out that infield single. And it happens, and that's that's the that's one of the big reasons why I love baseball because it not only is an enjoyable game to play, mm -hmm. but it teaches you a lot about life. Well, Marcus, thank you so much thank for you. joining me. It. I'm sure the fans enjoyed getting to learn a little bit about yourself. Good luck the rest of the season again. Thank you very much for a little bit of your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Marcus Judd, I'm Brady Beaton, and we'll be back with game two of the doubleheader here on Family Camping Night here on the US PBL Network. Awesome. Thank you. Jimmy John's Field is the perfect venue for birthday parties, summer picnics, company outings, and provides the best entertainment in Metro Detroit with great baseball all summer long. Spend your summer nights under the lights at Jimmy John's Field in historic downtown Utica. What are the odds that we're neighbors, where you've known each other our whole lives, and both tear the exact same things in the exact same knee? So an ACL tear is an injury to the main stabilizing structure of the knee. You want a good team around you because then you know that what you're doing is going to help you in the long run. My message to everyone who's helped me, thank you so much because you guys helped me progress so much. Also hearing it from a friend that's went through the exact same thing, I think sort of helps that know that there's a bright side at the end. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. At Ascension Michigan, we're committed to being your first choice for healthcare. Our nationally recognized heart program is the leader throughout Michigan in minimally invasive heart valve procedures. For joint replacement, spine, and cancer care, patients choose our specialists for advanced care and treatment. And we also excel in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. Check it out. Woo! Dang, this is clean right here. Ooh. I got it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, new air. Oh, that's sick. Whoa! <laughs> let's go! Fire. I really like them. Look at that. And the baby one. And the baby blue at the Those bottom. Those are tough. Really, Those are tough. These are tough. These are fire. A little bad to the bone. Love this. Light blue. Gotta go white bag rose with the delta. Perfect. I might throw a hundred now. No way. Oh wow. Dude. How smooth. Oh my gosh. Put that on. Yeah. I'm ready to go, baby. Let's go. This is nice. What is it new era? Yeah. Your own fire. Is this one yours? It's mine. Mine up. <laughs>
slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. You hear about the promo that Jimmy's John's got going on? Five off 20? How are they pulling it off? Magic? You got David's Copperfields in there? Show yourself, Copperfields! Jimmy John's. Five bucks off orders of 20 or more. They call me Prospects. Since the day I was born is a diver's watch. The challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. What are the odds that we're neighbors, where you've known each other whole lives, and both tear the exact same things in this exact same knee? So an ACL tear is an injury to the main stabilizing structure of the knee. You want a good team around you, because then you know that what you're doing is going to help you in the long run. My message to everyone who's helped me, thank you so much, because you guys helped me progress so much. Also hearing it from a friend that's went through the exact same thing, I think sort of helps that know that there's a bright side at the end. The Dave & Buster's Method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and discover the funner you hidden within you. The you that doesn't think about adult things and stuff. Ashley, I don't want to hear anything about your car registration when we're at Dave & Buster's. Okay. The you. You want to be. Let the Dave & Buster's Method illuminate you. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. Back here at Jimmy John's Field, game two tonight in the US PBL between the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers and the West Side Woolly Mammoths. Mammoths got the 4 nothing win in game one, now 14 and 12. Let's take a look at their starting lineup for game two of this twin bill affair. Leading off again, Ward Hacklin, he's in left. Jordan Hussein, the shortstop, is at is batting second. Burl Dixon in center field, batting third. Box Liam, the DH, bats fourth. Livingston Morris back at first base, batting fifth. Dravion Williams, Nelson still out in right field, batting eight, batting sixth, rather. Alec Garbasek at third, batting seventh. Scott Combs behind the dish, he bats eight. And Colby Seltzer, the second baseman, bats ninth. On the mound for the west side, Woolly Mammoths will be Nathan Witt. We'll take a look at him more in a moment. But first, let's take a look at how the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers will line up behind Andrew Verbruggi, brought to you by Three Dimensional Services. Carsey, how are the Beavers looking in game two? Yeah, we got J.D. Subs holding down over at first base, Marcus Judd at second, Ben Wilcoxon at shortstop, Christian Ortega at third, then looking at our outfield, we have Rudy Ramirez left, Chris Davis in center, Ray Hilbrick in right, and then behind the plate we have Luke Stevenson, and on the bump we have Andrew Verbruggi, who we'll also probably look at short. Well, not a lot of changes to be made when you have one batter on the bench, and that was your catcher, so that's going to be the change. But let's take a look at the Ascension pitcher comparison and Nathan Witt getting the start against Andrew Verbruggi. Let's start with him because he was originally a diamond hopper. Changes scenery, the numbers right there aren't exactly great, but hoping that the new uniform and maybe a different outlook can change his his season around. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's about just really resetting. You have a new team, you have a new jersey, you have a new coaching staff. It's about how different you can be now than what you were prior, because now you have the second opportunity, so you have to take full advantage of it. And Nathan Witt for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. Not a lot of innings logged on the season. In fact, this will just be the second game he starts. So hoping to get a few innings out of him, but Andrew Verbruggi starting on the mound as Ward Hackland comes to the plate. 
First pitch, called strike. And at game time of game two, 7.45, as the right Ever Bruggy works into the motion. This is in on the hands, one and one. The enemy Verbrighi really trusts his off speed when he's on. I've seen him in the past really be able to run it up there with the fastball. So I'll be intrigued to see what he does today. Well, and that's the reason why Verbrighi got the second chance because despite the numbers not being great, there have been flashes where you go, this guy can be a dude. Like he can be a, a major piece of my pitching staff. But the key word's consistency. Everyone here has talent. Everyone here has the ceiling to get there. It's how often can you bring that to the table? Yeah, and I mean, that's the whole point of this league, right? You try to build that consistency, build that resume to really get yourself to, whether it's another independent league or to an affiliate team, you're trying to build that resume and show you can be consistent from start to finish throughout a season. He's had a rougher start, but it's about how he bounces back here in the second half. Bruggy misses with the breaking ball away to Hacklin. Five pitch mix, four seam, two seam fastballs, a curveball, a changeup, and a slider. So a pretty traditional five pitch arsenal. Yeah, and you'll you'll see the difference between the four seam and the two seam. You'll see the four seam has a little bit more carry to it like that versus the two seam. You'll see a lot more run and a little bit more diving action to it. That was a challenge pitch to Ward Hacklin, who had a very nice game in game one for the Mammoths. In the win, he went two for three, a couple of singles, a stolen base, an RBI. So a little bit of everything for the leadoff man out of Irmo, South Carolina. Ooh. Just missed the knees. Carsey, I know as a pitcher, you're, you're hoping that the home plate umpire starts the lawnmower with that one, but instead it's 3-2. Yeah, and as a pitcher, I'm wanting that one every day of the week. I mean, that's... It's very close, and especially first batter of the game, working this many pitches. That's a great pitcher's pitch. Ground ball to short. Wilcoxon fields it on the waist high hop, throws across the diamond, retires Hacklin to start game number two. And that one didn't sound too good coming off the bat. I <laughs> might have had a broken bat on that one. Yeah, he, he jammed him just a bit. And that, I'm sure as a pitcher, that feels good when when you hear that sound and you, you basically you get a trophy breaking the bat. I, I want as many of them a game as possible. I'm sorry hitters, I, I know you <laughs> spend a lot of money on bats, but I want all of them broken. Jordan Hussein up to bat, first pitch over just above the knees for strike one. Yeah, and fans gotta love a broken bat too, right? Well, I mean, especially when the young ones, maybe the one goes flying and they, and they hand it out. Now that is a souvenir that not many people can say they ever got is, is part of a broken bat. Yeah, it, guys are very stingy about giving them out. And also sometimes it's just a safety reason. You right. get some of these bats that are almost built like slivers or like they're very sharp at the, uh, at the tip and you don't want to just hand that out to some young kid and possibly have him run around and hurt himself. Hussein flies out to Davis in center field. Burl Dixon comes up to bat. Been a very quiet first two batters as Hacklin and Hussein retired quietly. Burl Dixon, though, he is not a quiet bat from the left side. First pitch at the knees to Dixon. And Verbruggi really just looking like he's all there right now. Might be the change of scenery. It might just be because it's a fresh start at the start of the game. Verbruggi really just looks like he has a lot more feel than we've seen over the past few weeks of the zone right now. And he was used as the back end bullpen guy for the Diamond Hoppers. So again, change of scenery, maybe a little change of role, hitting that, as you said, that mental reset button. The one one in the dirt, but at least through the first two batters seeming all right as you can see a beautiful night right now. Rain may be in the forecast for a short while. Just a bit south of us in Detroit at Comerica Park as I'll have to put a pin in that, pick it up next inning as Dixon fly ball center field and Davis brings it in for out number three. Andrew Verbruggi gets the Mammoths down in one, two, three in order. We'll step aside as we send it down to Kara Wolfbauer for our fan of the game. Over to Kara.
You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast, and so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. All right, guys, I'm right in front here in section 104 with our Metro Trade Chevy dealers fan of the game, John Bonk. Now, his son is actually Nick Bonk, number 16 on the Beaver. So they came out from Chicago to come check him out tonight and catch a game. You having fun so far? So far, so good. Perfect. Now, I know some of you guys are probably upset I didn't pick you as a winner today, but lucky for you guys, if you get out those phones right now and scan the QR code right up there on the board, you can be a winner too. So enter for a chance to win four tickets to our championship game on September 9th, and maybe we'll see you guys there. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Make sure to scan that QR code, and we'll set it back up on Kevin now. Thank you. Coming up to bat in the bottom of the first inning, the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers game two lineup bat leading off in center field chris davis rudy ramirez in left field for the second game tonight bat second jd stubbs at first batting third malik bolin the designated hitter in the cleanup spot ray hilbrick had some good swings in game one he's in the five hole in right field christian ortega the hot corner batting sixth luke stevenson the Algonac native behind home plate, batting seventh. Marcus Judd at second, batting eighth. And Ben Wilcoxon is at short, rounding out the order. And we'll go to the defense in a moment as Chris Davis comes up to bat. Chris Davis didn't have a great game numbers-wise in game one, looking to bounce back as Witt takes the mound for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. Nathan Witt, the 6'4", 230-pound, good, rich native, came here by way of Michigan State University. And I think the first thing you think of when you see Nathan Witt is velocity. Yeah, I mean, first pitch of the game, 94 miles an hour. Debatably, almost the hardest pitch we've seen all day. 2-0 and is a couple of 94-mile-per-hour pitches miss up high. Davis, and a good hitter's count early. And that's the thing you'll see with Witt, is a little bit of struggle with command, as we're seeing right now, as he falls back 3-0. and But the upside is the velocity, and the stuff is plus-plus. Now, where he's fallen and gotten himself into a tr some trouble, where we see it on the ERA, is just that he sometimes loses the zone entirely. So hoping he can bounce back here and start this off as he finds the strike. Find the strike zone. You look at his numbers through the season, just 12 and a third innings of work, so very small sample size. Walk seven, so you want that number down a little bit. Struck out 11, but the batting average against 196. There's a fly ball to center field is deep, but playable for Burrow Dixon. He goes deep into the gap, making it look easy, and Chris Davis is retired. Anything looks easy for Burrow Dixon. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the Mammoth defense. Burl Dixon in center field. Bacarsi, how do the rest of the West Side Woolly Mammoths line up presented by Three Dimensional Services? We've got the true Mammoth himself, Livingston Morris over at first base, Kobe Seltzer at second, Jordan Hussein at shortstop, Alex Garbasic at third base, Ward Hacklin in left, Burl Dixon, as we said, in center, Dravian Williams, Nelson in right field. Then you got Scott Combs behind the plate, and as we said before, the flamethrower, Nathan Witt out on the mound. Rudy Ramirez comes up to bat. As Witt works out of the stretch at all times. And Carson, you said something last game that piqued my interest because as a general philosophy, again, baseball, there's not a one-size-fits-all answer. But I've noticed more guys working more from exclusively the stretch or an abbreviated windup. What are your thoughts? Because the windup is the old thought was it provided more velocity. That has obviously been disproven at this point. But you said you feel more comfortable in the windup. I think when you've been a starter for a long period of time, most of my career, besides the end of my college career and the early on in pro ball, I have done everything out of the windup. And so it's where I've always felt comfortable because that was my starting point each and every inning. It's where a majority of my training came from. 
So a lot of times you don't necessarily see starters, maybe a Zach Gallen, somebody of that Nathan Witt right now that goes out of the stretch. You'll also watch Witt and he'll turn kind of his hips, try to get him going early before he throws. So guys have different things. They try to make it a little simpler and that just might be where they feel comfortable. Connor Tomasic, that's on the IL for us right now. Another guy that throws out of the stretch. What he is pitching? 2-2 two, two hit hard on the ground. Picked up, thrown over to first, and Garbasic makes the play. Ramirez grounds out to third for the third time this evening, and Nathan Witt had the first two batters to go down rather quietly. But with the stretch, at least the way it was explained to me, and I think part of the reason why you see more younger pitchers, there's more guys out of the stretch, just told there's less mechanically to mess up where all you have to do is leg up, drive, deliver, and if you want to take the one step back where the wind up, you take the step, you turn. There's just more mechanically that could go wrong. Yeah, and that's where you just start to see the, the little simple variations change. Mm -hmm. I throw out of an alternate or uh, abbreviated wind up, so I start from the side and take right. that step back. And that's almost stretch adjacent because when someone gets on, you also have the ability to to get to, to just transition very well to the stretch where you're already on the side, you weren't straight up in that more traditional windup that you used to see more of. Yeah, and I mean, obviously it works for guys like Witt. I mean, a pitch ago, we just saw a 97 from him on track, man. So clearly it's something that works for them or for him more specifically. And again, it's a comfort thing, but the, the old myth that it provided more velocity, I think has long been pushed to the wayside. I think it's pushed to the wayside, but it also can just be a, a feel or placebo thing. And right there, I mean, once again, you're seeing 96. Right on the inside black, I mean, J.D. Stubbs is still alive in this at bat, but let's see what wit comes with. Besides the fact he has a fastball cutter slider. Not a deep mix. Tries to work away. Took something off that pitch, but the count runs full. I mean, that's a big frame throwing that hard. I mean, he is moving down the mound at a very high speed, and it gets on you quick. I mean, talking to our own hitters on the unicorns, it's one thing you hear a lot is it gets on you quicker than you can realize. Stubbs puts a charge into it, but hits it right to Hacklin in left. The Beavers go down in order. We played an inning still scoreless. We head to the second on the USPBL Network. Make your move with a quick and easy mortgage from Genesis Credit Union. We have mortgages to fit your life. Genesis Credit Union. Visit us today. The Dave & Buster's Method is designed to help you unlearn adulthood and discover the funner you hidden within you. The you that doesn't think about adult things and stuff. Ashley, I don't want to hear anything about your car registration when we're at Dave & Buster's. Okay. The you. You want to be. Let the Dave & Buster's method illuminate you. Begin the method today with five free games. You know you want to. Fifth Third Extra Time helps you do you better. So kick back and relax. You have extra time to avoid overdraft fees. Fifth Third Extra Time. This is banking a fifth third better. Bottom of the, or excuse me, top of the second inning. Let's get that right. As Andrew Verbruggi comes back on the mound. And Verbruggi had a very smooth first inning. It was ground out, fly out, fly out. He'll face Fox, Liam, Livingston, Morris, and Dravion Williams, Nelson. The middle of the Mammoth's order here in the second. Yeah, that, I like what I saw from Verbruggi early on. Saw him attack the zone more. You saw him be a little bit more commanding of hitters. And he would, it looked like the Verbruggi we've seen here in years past. I think that's the, the big upside for him is you watch and you start to see that vintage Andrew Verbruggi that has been here for two years, the veteranship of him start to show. Brady Beaton alongside Carsey Walker. Game two of this Saturday doubleheader. Fox Liam. 
Didn't have a box score that would jump off the page, but worked, what, 0 for 1. Worked two walks. So a quietly productive game at the plate in game one. Yeah, and Fox some days will just light it up and he'll have nights like he had last weekend with the two home runs. But there's a lot of times that he'll go one for three or one for four with a really big crucial double for right. the famous lineup. And coming into today, hitting just a few ticks shy of 350, he hasn't, hadn't worked a ton of walks. So that's something that you see a little bit of improvement, but he has come in to the Mammoth lineup and he has jumped all over the, jumped all over the opportunity. Yeah, and I think sometimes we get a little caught in it because he hasn't been here very long. It sounds right. like we're talking like he's struggling a little bit. This man's right on pace. I right. mean, 343, you have three home runs and two of them came in one night. I, you can't ask the guy to do much more. His, the power behind his bat and that swing is just unreal. Breaking oh. ball froze Liam, and that's just the tip of the cat to Bruggy. Wow, backdoor breaking ball, 22 inches of horizontal break. Wow. I mean, you saw the look on his face. He had no debate for it. He wasn't debating where the location was. He just knew he was out. I mean, that's all. that starts behind a right-handed hitter mm -hmm. and ends up in the zone. Mm -hmm. There's there's not a lot you can do about that unless you're looking for it. Livingston Morris comes up to bat. Big man from the right side. Oh. One and one to Morris. Game one struck out a couple times. Saw the conversation with him in between games. As he gets plunked, he'll head down to first, so he reaches in his first at bat. But I'm you know, hearing him talk about how he was thinking about law school and something he wanted to do. I don't know if I'm in a courtroom and Livingston Morris with that deep voice is arguing <laughs> against me. That is, uh, that would be a little intimidating to hear him argue it in a trial. I mean, I see this guy on like a daily basis and right. I still feel small next to him. So like if my job or money or anything is on the line, I don't think I want to be standing across from him in a courtroom. Right, exactly. Do they make suits that big? I, I think, yeah, I'm assuming he's gonna have to go to one of those special tailors because there were, there were linemen I played against that were smaller than Livingston Morris as Dre William Nelson comes up to bat. I feel like him and Shaq have the same Taylor. <laughs> He's big, but not quite that big. Still one of the largest in the league is William Nelson, the 1-1. One, one. one ball, one strike. Called strike on the outer part of the plate. One and two to Dre Williams Nelson. And a guy that'll work inside out here, really try to stay the other way with the baseball. He'll really try to drive into right field before he's actually going to try to pull it. There you go, just fought that pitch off. You know that low outside corner? That's a defensive swing. You see him there kissing the bat a little. Pre at bat ritual. He does that a lot, and you know, my, the thoughts on superstitions for me: if you believe it works, then it works. Yeah. Pitch misses Can't explain a bit it. low. It's just baseball. Oh, got away from Stevenson. Wasn't sure where it was, and Livingston Morris works into scoring position. You have any pregame rituals or superstitions? Uh, I'm a big pasta like guy before starts. Okay, that's, that's like my one thing. I don't really care where it's from or what pasta to be exact, but I've always like this whole season I've done pasta before starts. Well, it's worked out pretty well for you. Two and two to Williams Nelson. Spoils that breaking ball and again. The amount of break it has is well, it, it, it's nasty. That one started middle inside part of the plate and worked way off. To the, to the righty, Nelson, Williams Nelson. That's where I said earlier, you start to see vintage Rebraghi come out, really get nasty right here. 2-2. Two, two. 
Check swing. Did he go? Then an appeal, and well, he's not much better of a spot <laughs> to judge than the home plate umpire. Still worth the ask as the count runs full. This is why I, I stay in the booth and I am not an umpire. <laughs> it is tough going, I mean, the batters have to go from 90 some to 70 something, but the umpires do too. The 3 2. This is a way, heck of an at bat by Dre Williams Nelson to work the walk. For Verbrug, you right here, it's not hurting you. You know you have space. So we have a guy to put on, and now you're able to work for the double play. Alex Garbasic comes up to bat. And with the bottom of the order, try to work a ground ball. Get the inning. Get out of the inning pretty quickly. And you start to see the Beavers bullpen was moving around for a little bit. That looks like their pitcher that's down there right now is ready. So I'll be curious to see if they use Ruggie more in an opener role or if they're just going to try to use the whole staff to finish out the weekend here. I believe it's hard to tell from here that maybe the new pitcher, Jalen Sewell, who we first saw on Thursday, and while well, he was impressive in his debut. Yeah, once again, another big guy, really solid built frame. You can really just throw the ball. To make that sound a little bit more general than it is, but it, <laughs> that's the best way to describe him. People around the game know what you mean. Yeah. Is that was a heck of a pitch from Verbruggy. Doubts that dots that low and outside corner, pitching from a big advantage, 0-2. The 0-2. Way outside, easy take for Garbasek. See, now for Verbruggy, you really just have to get back into the zone and try to get yourself out of this. You can make one pitch here, get your two outs to get off the field. And if this is your last inning, go out in a very ha happy and high note. 34th pitch coming up. Are you thinking ground ball or are you thinking strikeout in this situation? Right here, if it's me, I want the strikeout, but I know from a team perspective is you want the double play, and I don't think they'll be able to get either of those. Can't get Garbasic at first, just too slow of a roller. Swinging bunt loads the bases. It was a hit batter, it was a walk. And it was an infield single. And the Mammoths are threatening in the second. And the big fellow was moving. I mean, he got down there quick. That was a slow ball off the bat, but he still had a shot there for a second. Hit it high, hit it slow. Don't think he could have bounced it any better getting that spot. Yeah, and this once again is a key spot for the Mammoths. They have to try to score before the third, so that way they can retain that lead going into the second half of the game. Yeah, and the numbers Carsey is referencing. The West Side Woolly Mammoths, the first three innings have been a big decider, and obviously in a six inning game, that's going to draw even more importance. 11 and one when leading after three, 0 and seven when trailing after the third. The 1-0 comb swing and a miss. Out in front it looked of the fastball. Yeah, he was a little early. I think he was just ready for something there that he knew was coming, just didn't get what exactly where he wanted it. Took a little bit of velocity off that fastball. That was about 87. Yep. So just a little slower than wherever Bruggy's topped off at. Check swing Ooh. and Combs not happy. Yeah, and it feels like the way he's swinging on those last two pitches feels like he's seeing it and then losing it. It looks like he's on time and then just losing right where, when he's about to swing. Maybe in his own head a little bit. See if for Bruggy can kind of execute here after those last two swings. Middle infield and double play depth, the one, two. Breaking ball away and Combs able to hold off. That's a great pitch. Tunneled well off of two high fastballs. Can't ask for much better. Nice job by Combs to lay off. Yeah. Especially after two swings where it doesn't feel like you got off your best swings on fastballs. Fastball misses off the plate away. There's nowhere to put him. Bases are loaded with only one away. If you're Combs here, you're either looking for something you can drive in this situation, especially with only one out, or you're looking to try to work a walk. It's got to be almost your sweet spot here. Got to come to him, the 3-2. Foul the way we will do it again. Fan made a nice catch. Got a bigger applause than yeah, used to was, for those. Well, it's a tough play, as you can see some of the fans still looking over to their right where that foul ball was caught. Three, three, two pitch coming once again for Bruggy trying to work out of this second inning jam. The pitch. 
A rung too high up the ladder, ball four, and that brings in a run. And the Mammoths take the one nothing lead. Base is still loaded. Combs gets the RBI. And Verbruggi will at least get to face another batter. Wilcoxon even comes up to give a little word of encouragement to his pitcher. As there is a beaver in the bullpen, that is, that is, first pitch swinging from Seltzer to deep left center field, that gets down, that'll score a couple. One run in to score. The second comes in, and Garbasek and Combs stands at third. And Colby Seltzer, who's been in a major slump, breaks out of it in a big way with a two-run double here in the second inning. And you saw him just kind of lean back and point up to the sky. as in just a thank you moment, because he has been chasing that big swing for a long time now. And that's just the monkey off the back, the relief to get that big hit. We will get a change on the mound. Three, nothing. West side, Woolly Mammoths lead the Beavers. Be back with a new arm on the bump here on the USPBL Network. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by Featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBcares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. We build roads, bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers. Our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are Operating Engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. We're for people, the pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steadies. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. Yes, we're a bank, and some say our business is all about money, but that's an old idea. Because look past the money, and you'll see real human lives. We see it, because we're for people. Huntington, welcome. Jalen Sewell on the mound for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. As the lefty comes in trying to get out of a jam, haven't seen a lot of this big lefty coming in relief, but the, the very little we have seen of him, the, the inning we saw back on Thursday, well, he was impressive. Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, it's a big frame and it's a dude that can really just control the zone and really take down hitters with just speed alone. Sewell pitched an inning back on Thursday, faced four batters, walked one, fan two. He will come at you with a couple different pitches, but you mentioned the fastball that really has a lot of life from the south side. Face Ward Hack only starts with the off speed. Yeah, 77. It's really just, I don't think that's what Hacklin was expecting right out of the gate for a guy he hasn't seen before. Runners on second and third. Combs on third. Seltzer on second after the two RBI double. Three nothing Mammoths were in the second. Hacklin fouls away the fastball. Middle, middle at 92. Yeah, and you talk about strikeout ability for him, right? Is you look at his last year at Georgia Gwinnett and 
he has 20 and a third innings pitched with 29 strikeouts. I mean, that's that's you're over a K per inning is usually you're heading in the right direction. Breaking ball gets away from Stevenson and a run will come in to score. There's a breaking ball in the dirt. Stevenson couldn't quite get over in time. Hit the shin guard on a tough angle and it's four nothing mammoths. Deja vu all over again. It feels like we just picked up where we left off in the last inning or yeah. the last game, I should say. Yeah, we're just gonna play the full 12 innings. Right. We'll go European soccer, the aggregate scoring. Yeah, always worth trying something new, right? <laughs> we can be the new experimental league. Well, Hacklin trying to get another RBI on the day. Grounded out his first time up as the infield comes in and a pitch clock violation on Sewell. Again, it usually seems it's the newer guys to the league that have a little bit longer to adjust, but count goes to two and two with the pitch clock. Yeah, and I know NAI was a little spotty with using the pitch clock properly this season. Breaking ball gets Hacklin swinging two away. From some of my former college teammates, they talk about, hey, sometimes we would have it, and then you'd go to different schools, whether they be smaller or bigger, and umpires wouldn't necessarily be on it because no different than here a little bit it's umpire ran well yeah because there was there was a pitch clock implemented but there wasn't a physical clock there Correct. so the umpires had to govern themselves and they have so much to think about it was not consistently enforced i know at least at the ncaa d1 level i believe next year every institution is required to have the physical clock that you see in center field that you will see behind the plate here at the uspbl Yep, and I know a lot of Power Fives moved this year to have the full clock, so that way they were already ahead of the, kind of the terms with it. I never saw any execution, though, of whether, like, if they were with outside of the time limit, so I never saw any pitch clock violations. Right, it was kind of a transition year, at least in college with regards to that, so should be the last year that really you see any sort of transition for new guys coming into the league. And obviously coming in with runners on if you're – Jalen here, you just, it, the pitch clock can get away from you if it's something you're not used to. Now you're just chasing whatever, like you're more focused on the hitter and less on the pitch clock. Jordan Hussein, the hitter, counts one and two. This is way away and heads up base running from Seltzer. He didn't even think about going. He knew he was getting that Jimmy Johns bounce off the short backstop. Yeah, and that, the dimensions of the field really are built differently. You're not getting a rounded backstop. You're getting it built squared off. And so you have these pads running along the back. And luckily for Jalen, it hit the pads and it kind of killed it. So that way Luke was able to go get it. And it was a fastball too. So it didn't have any funky spin to, to careen in any random direction. The 2-2 two -two wave and a miss. Put Hussein in a knot and Sewell does a decent job cleaning up the mess he inherited. But the Mammoth score for two of which came on the Colby Seltzer two RBI double. We head to the bottom of the second. Beavers chasing four here on the USPBL Network. What are the odds that we're neighbors where you've known each other whole life and both tear the exact same thing from this exact same knee? So an ACL tear is an injury to the main stabilizing structure of the knee. You want a good team around you because then you know that what you're doing is going to help you in the long run. My message to everyone who's helped me, thank you so much because you guys helped me progress so much. Also hearing it from a friend that's went through the exact same thing, I think sort of helps that know that there's a bright side at the end. Mammoths with the lead in the bottom of the second, and that has to make Nathan Witt's job a lot 
less stressful on the mound. Maybe like Bolden, Ray Hilbrick, and Christian Ortega coming up to bat, but four run cushion, it, it eases the tension a little bit for you on the mound, doesn't it? Yeah, it eases the tension, and also you got Colby Seltzer now feeling more like himself after that double. Takes a lot of stress of, hey, what I do my last bat, bat out of the equation. Now he's able to just go play baseball and have a little bit more fun with it. Nathan Witt, he hit 97 in the first inning with the fastball. First pitch fastball grounded to the right side into right field. Malik Poland goes the other way and it's a leadoff knock for the Beavers. I mean, just a little tardy on it, but he took 94 right through the gap on the right side. 97 off the bat, so squared it up. JJ, hard at work for his second day. It's, it's a long day for JJ and he's still putting in the hours. Yeah, it's seven days a week for this guy. It never takes a day off. He gets all the fanfare look at him. He's he's happy to be here. Ray Hillbridge, well, Hillbrick was swinging the bat pretty well in game one. Trying to get a little rally going here in the second and an answer at least something from the four runs put up in the top of the second by the Mammoths. Yeah, you can always count on Ray to give you hard contact. It may not always get down, especially against this Mammoths defense, but he'll always find a way to hit a ball hard. Just misses. Two and O. Oh. Hillbrick and if you're wit don't want to give the Beavers any momentum you want to this is a step on the throat type inning and really try to keep them at bay yeah we're getting close to that third inning and as we've talked about multiple times throughout the broadcast today that is the pivotal inning for the Bama so they really have to keep their lead here two and one runner on first bowl and getting a big lead is Hillbrick Hits it hard, but foul over the bullpen and left. If he can straighten that one out, he could have extra bases. There's a couple young fans run in battle for that ball. Somebody's getting a nice souvenir to take home today. May not be a broken bat, but <laughs> we have a souvenir. Well, well, that's a hard earned souvenir. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Wit comes set, deals. Just missed on the outer part of the plate. Stone Cold take by Hillbrick. Count goes to three and two. Yep, and there's our fan running off the ball. He's counting three, off how many pitch. he's got. Pitch, swing and a fly ball to left field. Hacklin sizes it up, ranges to his left and brings it in for the first out here in the second. Yeah, and I think he just missed his pitch right there. He's right on it, able to elevate it a little bit, just not the exit below that he needed, and I don't think he got all of it like he wanted to. Brings up the third baseman, Christian Ortega. Runner on first with one away. And Carsey, even if the Beavers can get one back this inning, you have to feel like, okay, we've calmed the waters a little bit. Yeah, I think one will really help as there's a single up the middle. It's a nice swing from Ortega. Put it, took it back from where it came. Now there's two on for Luke Stevenson. But yeah, you can push across Bolin and at least say, hey, all right, we can chip away at this lead and we can make the comeback and pair that up with maybe a scoreless top of the third. And now you feel like you're trying to take the momentum back. Yeah, and we talked about it last game as well, is if you were able to chip away at any point, you really start to do some damage because these are closer ball games than they may feel like at the time. Stevenson fouls it away. Average isn't there, but some of the power numbers for this catcher are he had two home runs early in his USPBL career. He's a college showcase guy out of Elon. And we know we've got some pop in that bat. Yeah, he's when he gets a hold of it, it goes in there, no doubters. Both of the home runs that I've seen him hit so far this season have been just absolute no doubters. One of them was dead center, and the other one was a backside home run for him. I mean, both of them cleared by a large margin. So Stevenson grounds it foul. So again, his, his batting average, it's 156, not what you want. But of the five hits, three doubles and two home runs. That's, I mean, you look at the, the slugging percentage and it's third on the team. Yeah, and it'll show you, like we said, I mean, when he puts it out, it's by a large margin. 
So he shows you that the power is there. The consistency may just not be there yet. And once again, he's one of our newer guys. Came in in the college showcase. So he's got time. We still have the whole month of August for guys to really try to pad their stats here before the end of the season. Swings and misses. So this time, Stevenson set down on strikes. Two on and two away for the second baseman, Marcus Judd. And everybody in the league's favorite person, Marcus Judd. He has a very outgoing personality, but you saw in the interview, also a very humble individual and, and understands the, the bigger picture, but one of the most outgoing and eccentric guys in the league. Yeah, you saw it in the interview as he talked about. Puts it on the ground up the middle. One second baseman grounds out to another and a bang bang play at first as Seltzer is able to gun down Judd. Beavers threaten but do not score. We head to the third, 4 nothing Mammoths here on the USPBL Network. Companies are competing for talent like never before. With the complexities of handling tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and other HR functions, it's easy to see how a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions makes all the difference. Tryon empowers businesses of all sizes to attract and retain talent by offering access to top-tier health care and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. First State Bank is a locally owned and operated business. We're part of your community. At FSBCares.com, you'll find ways that we're making a difference by featuring locally owned and operated businesses, providing access to helpful financial resources, and engaging with community. FSBCares.com is part of our commitment to the neighborhood because strong neighbors mean stronger communities. Where good neighbors do great things. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Fans sticking around for game two of this doubleheader. They might stick around after the game as well. It is the family campout night presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers here at Jimmy John's Field. There will be a movie and some fans will be staying the night here at the ballpark. Yeah, I spend enough time here, so I don't think I'll be staying <laughs> over tonight. But I, I am a little envious of the kids getting to camp out, watch a movie on the field and kind of enjoy the, the stars on, on the sky. Some of those fans sitting out in right field Join the, the view from the hill, which always seems to be one of the more popular hangout spots here at Jimmy John's Field. Yeah, you gotta love being able to sit out there. A little bit cheaper seats, but you get to take right. a blanket out there. You get to still enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy everything that's around you still. It's always we, the nice part it. about the stadium as well, right. too. We've seen a... <laughs> We've seen a few balls get hit out to the hill, especially some of those lefties can really get a hold of them. And then, then if you get a ball, you hope to get them signed. And that young fan, I saw a couple signatures on there. Yeah, I think I yeah, there's a solid amount of the team that's on there. Burl Dixon leads it off for the Mammoths here in the third inning. It'll go Dixon, Liam Morris. So again, three big bats, but Jalen Sewell has been up to the task. Wonder if he has a Burl Dixon autograph. That might be worth something someday. You know, he is one guy that um, I did get his Diamond Dynasty card playing MLB the show. I got a Burl <laughs> Dixon one, and I'm like, oh, so it, Burl Dixon, he, he's big time. <laughs> the, the 0-1 misses away one and one. Did you get it like while he was here? Yeah, I got it like a couple a month ago. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, I got. I was like, wait a minute, I know him. <laughs> We should get all the USPBL players and then we'll be the show. I feel like that's how that should work. <laughs> Two and one to Burl Dixon. Flied out to center field his first time up. <laughs> Three and one to Burl Dixon. Oh, we love our director, Gibby. He does a great job behind the scenes. <laughs> the 3-1 big swing and a miss from Burl Dixon. And Jalen Sewell, 
We need to give him the, the attention he deserves because he's come in and he has been throwing some very solid pitches. Struck out the, the two batters he faced. As, yeah, some fans bragging about their time at the ballpark as Sewell trying to punch out one of the leads, league's best in Dixon. I saw the Voodoo Ranger on the phone. That's top quality beer that, that we sell here. That's a top quality pitch from Sewell. Third punch out in a row. His stuff is is uh is electric right now yeah he's really got the swing and miss factor he really had the big breaking ball going at the end of last inning to get out of the gym and you saw it again there rings up fox liam struck out looking his first time up and you're gonna see a big bat versus a big arm here Fastball ball at 89 just missed the zone And once again, we've seen Jalen up into the low 90s already this season in his, in his first appearance. 1-0, high chopper, just keeps it fair, unfortunately, for Liam as Stubbs picks it up. Steps on the bag for out number two. And Jalen really keeping it smooth now. He's working through the lineups pretty efficiently and now start to see him set in a little bit as the bullpen's now for them is once again getting hot. If you're John Dombrowski, you have to love what you're seeing. Yeah, I think especially compared to earlier in the season, you're really watching the staff start to come together pitch by pitch. Jalen Sewell. One and oh to Morris. Was hit by a pitch his first time up. Just on the outside part. I mean, just grabs that outside part of the plate. Jalen Sewell. Yeah, really good command of the zone the second half. 1-1. One, one. Similar spot, different call, 2-1. and one. Yeah, and sometimes. And I was worried about Jelly. And by the way, that West Side Woolly Mammoth gear is probably some of the best gear we have. The bad to the bone stuff. Yeah, that and the new era hats that we just got in. Yeah, that, by the way, that commercial features Carsey Walker, if you were curious. <laughs> so, good. Master of the plug, Carsey. <laughs> you, you, you are very excited to get in that new Utica Unicorn hat. <laughs> As count is three and one to Livingston Morris. Sewell trying to battle back misses and he will walk the big man reaches for the second time in the game rumor has it the new era hats have superpowers didn't hear it from me i'm just relaying <laughs> the info well we've seen some excellent performances since those hats have come in dre williams nelson he's been here about the whole time that they've had him and he has been a welcome welcome addition to the mammoth lineup trying to keep this Third inning alive, four nothing Mammoths. First pitch, swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Yeah, big swing and a miss. Also, can we talk about the size, dress, size difference between Livingston and JD over at first base? I've never seen somebody make JD look small before. Yeah, JD is not a small human, but Livingston makes everyone look small. That fastball called strike quickly, 0 and 2. There are a lot of large men in this league, and well, you talk about, and that usually helps, especially with pitchers. I mean, I think the, the Diamond Hoppers have a height requirement to be a pitcher. <laughs> the 0-2. Breaking ball, trying to go through the back door. Missed just a bit low. <laughs> oh, there is that new era hat <laughs> oh, on, Ca Lord. on Carsey Walker. Perfect face of the unicorns there. And suddenly I resign. The 1-2. <laughs> Ground ball foul from Williams Nelson. That was a quick turnaround by our by our production crew. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently they forgot that there was a game going on and they, they, they decided well, there were better things to do. Well, when the name Carsey Walker pops up, they're usually that usually distracts people. Nothing's distracted Jalen Sewell as he has been magnificent out of the pen. The one, two, and misses the throw, the Ooh. tag. They got, got him. him. Beautiful throw from Luke Stevenson. Had to put it on the money. And Livingston Morris gunned down. And I 
don't think he believes it. We head to the bottom of the third, still 4 nothing Mammoths here on the USPBL Network. Why are all these business owners smiling? Because they rely on Tryon to handle difficult and time-consuming HR tasks like payroll, benefits administration, and more. Working with one of the nation's top professional employer organizations provides access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans and Tryon's team of attorneys and HR experts. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Slide into a new home. Work with a local mortgage pro who works for you. Get a cheaper, faster, easier home loan. Find a mortgage broker near you today at findamortgagebroker.com. Back here on the US PBL Network, four to nothing. The West Side Woolly Mammoths are on top. And we'll have a new arm on the mound for those fans. Bo Atkins takes the bump, the Riverton, Illinois native. And well, anytime you come to the game with a four to nothing lead, you have to be pretty excited about that one. Yeah, it gives Bo a lot of room to work here. You can really start to aim for a couple more strikeouts. You can be a little bit more aggressive with hitters when you have this much room to work with. Atkins, 23 and a third innings of work. He struck out 30. He's walked 12. Those are the good numbers. It's been a little hittable. 27 hits and opponents are batting 273 against him. That's why the ERA is in the high fives. Yeah, and you, you see it. It's because of one unlucky outing. You watched him last time go out there, dominant very early and then had a rough second half of that outing. Golden hour here in downtown Utica is whatever inclement weather was forecasted for us has gone by the wayside for now. And Ben Wilcoxon leads us off. He's been a hot bat out of the nine spot and he takes the first pitch he sees right to Burl Dixon in center field. One pitch, one away for Atkins in the third. I know he didn't have to move far on that one, but I mean, everything that man does just looks so easy. Yes, he is one of the, I got to use a scouting term and a baseball nerd term, toolsiest player yeah. where, you know, he's got the speed. He's, he, I guess his worst attribute maybe is his arm, but it's still a good arm. It's yeah. just he's got good speed, good vision, good bat. And yeah, he just he is smooth out there, just like the man at the plate, Chris Davis. Two of the premier guys in the league and the West Side Woolly Mammoth pitching staff done a nice job keeping Davis out off the base paths on the top of the order. Yeah, and the fastball at 92 just missing the corner there. Davis looking for his first hit of the twin bill. 1-1. One, one. Gets under it a bit. And Burl Dixon coming in, but he will give way to Ooh. Dravion Williams Nelson for out number two. And they're getting a nice little laugh out of it. Trey almost tripped, tumbled, and fell over, but him and Burl got a good laugh out of it there at the end. Oh, they're, they're pretty, some pretty upbeat guys. Rudy Ramirez comes to the plate. Grounded out to third his first time up. A, a few rogue Rudy chants are coming from the stands. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually seen Burl in a bad mood. Seen him upset for maybe like 10 seconds, but I don't think I've ever seen him in a bad mood. It's part of baseball, being able to bounce back from, not let anything get you down. Yeah. And because it, it is such a long grind. These are what people call the dog days of summer. The 1-0, popped in the air. Morris going back, he gives way, and did he catch? No, Seltzer didn't grab it. That would have been tough for any of those three men to make the play. And Seltzer, good effort, but luckily for Rudy Ramirez, he's still alive. 
Yeah, I mean, even when he dove for that, it looked like he kind of picked it instead of actually catching it in the air. So I don't think he had a shot regardless once he started to come down. Well, sometimes if you sell it like you caught it, you can you can steal a call. And I know at least in some other sports, they will teach you make the umpire, make the official tell you no. Sell it and make them go, no, no, you didn't catch it. Get back out there. Yeah, it's all about acting. you got to have a little flair for the theatrics. And I'm sure you hate as on the mound as a pitcher when – there's an inside pitch and the guy tries to sell that and hit him. Yeah, well, I don't run into many of those anymore, but when I do, they do make me laugh nowadays. Or the one, did it hit the bat? Did it hit the forearm? We had that in the in the first game. Weren't yep. sure what it hit. And I think it did hit the forearm, but yeah, you got you to gotta sell it too. Yep, I've had a few of those this season where they're just the controversial one that runs up and in. Sinkers kind of take off on you a little bit. Hits the knob of the bat, but nobody can tell the wiser. Ooh, wanted to go. Just missed that high inside corner. Mears has fought off a couple tough pitches here. Two balls, two strikes, two away, nobody on in the bottom of the third. Atkins delivers. Missed below the knees, three and two. Yeah, big pitch right here. Try not to allow anybody on this half inning. 3-2 from Atkins. Check swing. Ooh, did, he? did he go? Yes, he did. Atkins gets the punch out and sets the Beavers down in order. We head to the fourth. The Mammoths leading by four here on the USPBL Network. You dreamed of starting a company, not an HR department, but your business has grown fast, and so have the complexities of payroll and taxes, benefits administration, and other HR functions. That's why your business needs a professional employer organization like Tryon Solutions. Tryon provides businesses of all sizes access to top-tier healthcare and employee benefit plans. With Tryon, you don't have to grow it alone. Visit RelyOnTryon.com. You can always rely on Tryon. Brennan Cox on the mound here on a beautiful night in downtown Utica. The lefty taking the reins from Jalen Sewell. So one strong lefty to another, and Brennan Cox comes in. Had many strong pitchers throughout the USPBL, and well, early in the season, guys were getting picked off left and right. Our opening day matchup, Jake Wazinski and Kyle Bischoff. Well, if you weren't there for opening day, you didn't get to see Jake again, and you got one more chance to see Kyle before yep. they were both signed by the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, I mean, both electric arms. Jacob was all of six foot seven, six foot eight, and would just throw straight downhill and find a way to get you out. While Bischoff was a little bit craftier, but also still being around mid nine, just blowing it right past guys. They were both really, really fun to watch really early on. And then Francis Florentino yep. signed by the Minnesota Twins. He was placed in A ball before being placed on the IL. And Duncan Hewitt also made his trip down with the uh, with the Twins. Yep. I mean, a lot of guys all in one organization starting to kind of build the USPBL family over there over the years. Well, the Twins signed the very first guy ever out of the USPBL, and it's been a strong pipeline ever since. Dre Williams, Nelson, Alex Garbasic, and Scott Combs will bat for the Mammoths here in the fourth as they face Brennan Cox. Yeah, the first pitch missing just a little bit high. Cox won't blow you away either. He'll just mix it up here. As a three-pitch mix, the fastball, the slider, and the circle change. So one that goes straight, one that breaks to the left, one that breaks to the right. All you need if you can throw all three well. That's very true. Sometimes the best pitch is just a strike. There is a strike two on a swing and a miss. 
Two very big swings, may I add. Brennan Cox, he's been in Southeast Michigan his whole life. From Taylor, Michigan to Wayne State, and now the US PBL. Been pitching close to home a lot as the one-two backdoor breaking ball can't find its way home. Two and two. Yeah, and Dre looking to get on any way, anyhow here. Kind of start to extend that lead once again going in the second half. Worked a walk, later came around to score in his initial at-bat in game two. Jam shot bounces foul. Yeah, once again, just working. Like I said, he'll try to go to the right side of the infield or the outfield. He'll keep his chest over it and just keep fighting. He's one of those guys that has more power going inside out than he will pull on the ball. After time was called, Cox working back in. Come set the pitch. Bounces it high, is it fair? It is, Williams Nelson didn't know where it is. Oh, Stevenson no. lost at the throw to first, but it got Williams Nelson and He is a bit perturbed. He didn't know where the ball was. I don't know if he thought it hit him at first, but Luke Stevenson in a chaotic situation kept with it and got the out. I think right here as the Mammoth as a whole, is you've had two unfortunate calls between that and then the uh, Livingston getting thrown out at second there to end the last inning is you have to just remain calm, know you have a lead here, and try to secure just the win. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do too much. Don't try to do any more, any less than you've been doing from the start. Well, the win could be important. With the win in game one that put the Mammoths in sole possession of first place, a half game up on the Utica Unicorns. Another win here puts them a full game up as we end the weekend. <laughs> Carsey Walker, a pitcher for the Utica Unicorns as Garbasek inside out the pitch into right field for a one out single. Yeah, Garbasek two for two now today, just driving the ball right where he needs to, trying to support the team, keeping himself on base and giving his teammates opportunities to drive him in. Well, the bottom of the order was what did damage against Verbruggi back in the second inning. Garbasic had a single and then Combs worked that bases loaded walk and Seltzer's double. But Combs as an RBI in the game, doesn't have an at bat yet as the first pitch misses ball one. And I'll be curious to see with Colby Seltzer coming up here soon, if we're going to see him start to open it up now that he's had that hit that double, if we see him kind of go on a tear and get on a hot streak here over the next few games. Combs follows it away. Yeah, sometimes it just takes the one. Just the, just the mental block of, I know you don't have a, a whole lot of at-bats or not a huge sample size, but when you see that average on the scoreboard, you're like, man, that's not where I want it to be. It can wear on you a bit mentally. Yeah, and that's the hardest part about being a professional athlete is not stat checking yourself at all times. Because at the end of the day, this is your job and you want to perform at your job to the best degree possible. But if when you're looking at that and it's broadcasted to everybody right, in the stadium. Right, bright, big numbers up on the board. Hard to ignore at times. Yeah. The one, two. Defensive swing pushes it foul. Count remains one and two to the Mammoth catcher. Got a little fooled there. Saw the inside out just fight off swing. I think he thought that he was getting the fastball up and away there. Lives to see at least another pitch. Had basic a, on first. Had a little away. bit of a smile on his face there for a second about it. Able to hold off that inside pitch. Count goes to two and two. Ernan Cox, love a double play ball right here. Get him out of the fourth. The lefty delivers. Right on cue, Will Cox in oh. to Judd, to Stubbs, and to the dugout, the Beavers go. They get the double play, ends the fourth, and they'll look to cut into this Mammoth lead for nothing. Mammoths, we head to the bottom of the fourth on the USPBL network. We're for people. The pioneers, the underdogs, the players, and the slow and steadies. We're for people, for who they are and who they could become. 
Yes, we're a bank. And some say our business is all about money. But that's an old idea. Because look past the money, and you'll see real human lives. We see it. Because we're for people. Huntington, welcome. They call me Prospects. Since the day I was born as a diver's watch, the challengers of the world have taught me many things. Life is not a numbers game. It's about challenging ourselves. No matter what happens, just follow your heart. These pioneers drive our generation forward. Not by setting records, but by never giving up. Keep going forward. Prospects. Available at Lucido Fine Jewelry. In the bottom of the fourth inning, as the the fans that have stuck around are, hope, well, some of them may be hoping for a mammoth sweep tonight as the Beavers send up the middle of the order. Yep. As Stubbs, Bolin, Hillbrick comes up to bat, and Carsey, you feel like if they're going to come back, they need to chip away. We talked about it last game. We talked about it a couple innings ago. Just get one or two back, make the job easier for the final six outs. Yeah, and that's, I mean, it's the hardest part, and it's also the most simple part of the whole game plan is you just have to find a way to chip away. It's four runs. It's not an overwhelming amount. You're not in the double-digit territory category territory however you want to phrase it but you are in a position where you need to hit and it needs to start now and it needs to start getting to a point where it's consistent if you really want to not let them make this leap and take themselves that much farther ahead in the standings Bo Atkins out for his second inning of work what one two three is and see the few fans watching in the suite First pitch misses away, 91 on the gun to Stubbs. Yeah, once again, just another guy that's going to be high eights, low nines. And he's got a couple pitches. The fork ball's one of his better pitches, and he's also able to spin a slider in there when he needs to. Atkins, you mentioned, uh, that is it listed as that four-seam slash sinker, a curveball slider, and a fork ball, which is one of the – more fun pitches as Stubbs turns on one, puts it back up the middle, slices away from Dixon, and a leadoff double for J.D. Stubbs, just what the doctor ordered for the Beavers. And when I said they needed to do it and they needed to do it now, I think J.D. heard me. Right. Well, you have that sense of urgency. You're shut out in game one. So through the third inning, in a nine-inning game, you would have been shut out as well. So get that little bit sense of urgency as Malik Boland comes up to bat. He singled his first time up. But the fork ball, an interesting pitch. It's, it's a variation of the slider, but some for some guys it can come out and almost look like a knuckleball with no rotation and it just drops. Yeah, so it's a different version of a splitter. So what it is is you're taking the ball and you're splitting it and you're able to kill the spin, so that's where you get more of the knuckling effect. But it's more of a vertical break pitch. I'd right. almost... Uh, Hurston Waltrip, who just got drafted out of the University of Florida, had probably one of the best splitters slash fork balls, and it split between his actually his middle two fingers. And he found a way to just make this thing move like a curveball. When their track man would pick it up, it was reading as a 12-6 curveball. Right. And not all pitchers can throw it because you do need to have meatier hands, longer fingers yep. to be able to control that baseball so you can hold it in your glove. And when you throw it, it yeah, it, you're – you're, it's like you have a fork and you stuck a baseball in between the <laughs> prongs as the breaking ball misses low, two and one. Yeah, and Bo, looking like he's, his mistake pitches are a little bit more over the plate so far. Malik looks like he's right on top of it right now. And JD clearly didn't miss his pitch. Bolin, he can spin to win. He's one guy, if you want to miss, miss away and walk and don't put one over the middle of the plate. Yeah, and it's all about being timely here. This is away. Three and one. Are you calling the pitches? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would still I still think the plan is to throw strikes, but yes. uh -huh. if you are going to miss, I would rather miss there 
then catch a lot of the plate and see another one go in the gap. The 3 1. Bolin walks. Hillbrick comes up to bat, two runners on, and the Beavers have threatened at various points of the game. You take a look at the line score for tonight. Mammoth, four runs on three hits, no errors. The Beavers, no runs on three hits. So you had the same amount of hits. The difference is that line score looks like it should be a much closer game, but the Beavers have worked one walk. That was the one surrendered right there by Bo Atkins. So haven't had as many base runners. This is just the, for the Beavers here in the bottom of the fourth, it's just the 14th batter coming to the plate while through four innings, the Mammoths have sent 17 to the plate. More guys to the plate, more opportunities to get guys on and more opportunities to get guys across. Yeah, and I think it's the biggest thing that you you have to pay attention to is how many free bases have the Beavers really given the Mammoths? It's not like they're sending 17 guys up there because they're hitting around. Right. They are just getting free base after free base because they're putting up quality at bats that are getting them on base. Fly ball, center field, deep but playable for Burl Dixon. Settles underneath of it. And out. JD's not even thinking about it. Oh, well, he, he wanted to at least try and force a throw, but no, JD Stubbs was had no intentions of going to third. First out of the inning, the fly out. Christian Ortega comes back up to the plate. Ortega, one for one this game. Had a little bit slower start to the day earlier today, but it now really finding a way to get on base and hopefully for their sake, he can come up and put a ball in the gap here and hopefully score a run, if not two. Ortega came from Tusculum College where he flirted with hitting 400, ended at 385 and came in and he's been hitting the ball well for the most part in his first couple of games. Uh, was, I believe, two for four back on Thursday. Has a hit here in game two of the doubleheader. Yeah, and another big frame. It seems like everybody knew that it keeps coming in. The scale just keeps raising and raising. Well, I will say, whenever it seems like guy's gotten hurt or signed, it doesn't matter what team it is. Whoever they bring in doesn't just, you know, fill the gap, all right, you're a Band-Aid. They have come in and they have succeeded and they have elevated the team. Yeah, I mean, we've been lucky enough to have quite a few of those. The guys that we've picked up throughout the season have been nothing short but great for us. A lot of them mostly being pitchers, but they've come in and continued to do their job week by week and game by game. That last pitch, a beauty to get Ortega swinging and missing. 14 inches of horizontal break, 12 inches of vertical break. That's yeah. moving a lot. Yeah, no, that's moving exactly where it needs it to and obviously we saw on the screen a lot of big swing and misses everything that Bo seems to be throwing right now starting as a strike and really getting that deception to where he falls out of the zone and hitters have no chance luke stevenson up to bat a strikeout victim in his inaugural appearance tonight check swing no swing at a heater at the letters inaugural that's a good word thank I you i like that i get paid for words <laughs> J.D. Stubbs at second, Malik Bolin at first. First two runners were aboard. Last two runners have been retired. Stevenson has the pop. If he could find a gap, could cut into this lead. A little Ooh. late on the fastball, 90. At the bottom of the thighs, fouled away for strike one. Yeah, and Luke's a guy that will go down and get it. Speaking from experience, I've seen him go down to the bottom of the zone and really be able to turn on a baseball or drive it backside. Two balls and a strike. Atkins settles in. High and in, ball three. Marcus Judd waits on deck. Should Stevenson get aboard, the speedy second baseman have a chance to get a high pressure at bat. Chance to put some runs across. Atkins delivers. Big swing and a miss. Stevenson had bad intentions with that swing. Swings through it for strike two. I think this is what you're really about to see is competitive pitch right here because obviously you can see the catcher saying, come on, bring it right here. Let's get it done. Runners will be in motion with the pitch. The 3-2 fouled straight back. 89. That was right in the zone and Stevenson battles. 
And obviously full count, two outs. Runners are moving on the pitch. So anything put in play here has a chance to score two. Right. Just get it through the infield. You're guaranteed to score one. Exactly. Find any sort of gap or down the line, almost certainly scoring the second runner, Bolin, from first. The 3 2. Ball four. Stevenson gets aboard. Works a long at bat, gets the walk, and the bases are juiced for Marcus Judd. Yeah, I'm looking to see. Well, yeah, we don't have a ton of movement down there, but I do see somebody down in the Mammoth bullpen There's down the an right field line. Jersey warming up, warming up. It looks like a right hander, but that limits it to every single reliever in the Mammoth's bullpen. Yeah, there's only a handful of lefties that are in this league, and we've seen two of them today. Judd turns on one, hits it high and far, but foul. Oh, he was just out in front. It was 85 off the bat. Straighten that out, and oh boy. Marcus Judd feeling pretty good as you see right there. It is Cole Coughlin, the TCU product, getting ready in the pen. Another guy that's got just a mean game face. Yes, he does. And we'll get a violation, I believe they got Atkins. See what the scoreboard goes up with. There was a pitch clock violation of some sort. No, 0-2. We're going to give it to Judd. Marcus Judd will use his timeout, so first pitch he sees, it's a towering fly ball foul. Doesn't see a second pitch, but it's 0-2, and the complexion of this at-bat has changed. Base is loaded. Beaver's in desperate need of a run. High chopper to short. Hussein goes the short way over to Seltzer, and the Beavers leave them loaded. We're through four. Four-nothing Mammoths here on the USPBL Network. We build roads, bridges, wind farms, and pipelines, schools to skyscrapers. Our members create monuments. We operate. We're the operators and mechanics behind the advanced heavy machines that move Michigan forward. We maintain boilers and HVAC. Our members run the complex heating and cooling systems that we all depend on. Our training is second to none, and safety is our priority. We are operating engineers 324, and we keep Michigan running. Young fans enjoying the game here at Jimmy John's Field. It is four to nothing, West Side Woolly Mammoths. Esposito, the lefty for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. The Port Washington, New York native to South Carolina, and he is a lefty that has some, some pretty sick stuff for the Beavers. Yeah, a little bit smaller frame, not very tall, I believe 5'9", 5 5'10", 5 but he can bring it. We've seen him up to 95 so far this season. I mean, just a guy that can lean back, I can really let it eat. Through 10 innings of work, he has walked 12 guys, he struck out 25. Yeah, there was at one point that I think he had only not struck out about two guys he faced through his first, I think, five or six innings. He has that electric stuff, and when someone may be looking for a late inning guy, someone in organized affiliated ball, wants a back end bullpen guy, a lefty that can bring it and can miss barrels is someone they're gonna look for. Yeah, I mean, he he is the definition of that. He has the mentality for it, he has the mindset, and he's gonna go right at you, and you're, it's up to you to hit the mistake. 
it will be Colby Seltzer, Ward Hacklin, and Jordan Hussein that'll be looking for the mistake against Michael Esposito. Trying to extend their 4-0 lead here in the top of the fifth. It was 4-0 Mammoths in game one. It's 4-0 Mammoths here in game two. And Seltzer, a big reason for that, a two RBI double that brought in a pair. Wings the first pitch he sees, 94, fouls it away. Think Seltzer's feeling confident in the box? <laughs> I mean, first pitch hacking. Obviously, we're a decent way through the season now, and Esposito has been here long enough to for everyone to know that he's going to come right at you. So if you aren't hunting the fastball, I don't know what to tell you. 95-mile-per-hour fastball fouled straight back. I do like this approach from Seltzer. He is not backing down. Yeah, I think he has done a really, really good job of staying composed and knowing that, hey, we found kind of our zone and our sweet spot today. So now let's see how far we can push it and really keep doing what we've been trying to do for a couple weeks now. If Esposito can cut down the walks, he will be almost automatic. Opponent batting average is .83. Yeah, if you take the walks out of it, I mean, he's been hands down the most dominant pitcher. Now, granted, league. that's a big if because yes. control is part of the game as it goes to two and two. But, man, Esposito, you can see it there. If you can just hone in that command a bit, that stuff can be elite. High pop-up. He won't strike out Seltzer. Judd camps underneath of it. Oh, misplayed it for a second. But the shifty Judd gets underneath of it for out number one. He knew he had it. He just had to make sure that you knew he had right. it. Right. A little flair for the dramatics. Ward Hacklin comes up as the lineup turns over. 0 for 2 today. Ground out and a strikeout. Yeah. Not maybe the second game that he wanted after a hot start to the day. I think you went 3 for 4, if I was correct, in the first game. But then, you know, it's baseball. It's going to have its pitfalls. It's also going to have its highs. Hacklin was two for three, but reached base three times. A couple of singles, an RBI, hit by pitch, a stolen base, and a run score. Oh. He filled up every statistical category possible. Oh, and two to Hacklin. Yeah, that's usually a term reserved for basketball, yeah. where you fill up the stat sheet. But Ward Hacklin filled <laughs> up the stat sheet. Not a lot of zeros anywhere on that box score. Behind 0 and 2 to Esposito. It's popped up right side of the infield. Stubbs. Brings it in as he straddles the line for out number two. Yeah, Esposito just missing barrels right now. Seems like the contact's there and everyone's seeing it well, but they're just missing it. And he doesn't have a large arsenal of pitches. Forcing fastball, slider, and changeup. And when you're a late inning guy, you need two pitches that you can rely on to, to just get you through three or four batters in most scenarios. Yeah, and he tends to more times than not live off the four, or seam in the slider. And that's Fastball. usually if you see the slider. 95 got it by him. Well, and the greatest closer of all time threw one pitch, Mariano Rivera threw a cutter. You yep. knew it was coming. Yep. Everyone knew it was coming. You just couldn't hit it. Yep. The 0-1, fouled straight back. Fastball's working. Well, we see him go up and above 95 tonight. As a pitcher, how much do you think about velocity when you know you have pretty good stuff and that number pops up every time? I don't think you think about it as much, but there's certain moments like this where he's 0-2 here, and it's can I reach back and get that next one? Breaking ball, low to 1-2, and two, maybe trying to change the eye level, set up that high here. Yeah, and it seems like Jordan's on it a little bit more, just really staying there, battling, kind of fighting off those two strikes, fouling him, staying right where he needed to be. I think he was just trying to get off, like that possibly change the eye level. One, two to Hussein. Another breaking ball inside, so back to back. Benders. Two and two. Thought that one was a little bit closer than it was, but I was proven wrong by track, man. It can humble all of us. The 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball right side. Stubbs on the backhand, but Esposito is sleeping on the mound. That'll be an infield single for Hussein. 
Yep, but unfortunately, PFPs still do happen. Yes, That's why we do. practice them. One of the first things you do in spring training. <laughs> unfortunately, yes, it is. <laughs> but I'm sure every manager in the league and around the anyone watching is going, see, that's why we do it. <laughs> and I think Esposito, again, fell asleep. He goes, all right, made a good pitch, and he admired it a bit. And, well, he's going to have to pitch to Burl Dixon. Pops the first pitch out of play. And he goes 92, basically right down the pipe to Dixon, and all he can do with it is follow it away. Yeah, I mean... It's power arm versus power bat. So it's going to go mano y mano and see who's going to win in this one. Burl Dixon held relatively quiet out of the three spot in this twin bill. The 0-1. Sometimes I feel like you can only be so hot for so long. Like right. there just eventually has to be a point where you just can't be the all-star MVP every single day of the it's week. It's the humanizer. You go, okay, is this guy mortal? Yeah. Like, does he, does he have flaws? And well, they've done a nice job with Dixon, despite trailing the 0-2. Check swing, no swing, the appeal, and what I expected, saying Dixon did hold up. Yeah, I think it's like you said earlier, It's you talk about being toolsy and whatnot is. He, he just has every defensive tool possible, and then you go and look at the bat, and he's batting 342 coming into today. Check, swing, ground ball, or take can still beat it can't out. handle it. And, well, it's usually how it works as a pitcher. You get the guy that should have ended the inning gets on. Then you get a check swing. They'll give an error on that to Ortega. So now there's runners on first and second with two away. And Fox Liam comes up to bat. I think that's what Stevenson's saying. Hey, let's keep throwing outs. Yeah, I mean... Unfortunately, it's the old saying, sometimes when it rains, it pours. I was talking a little bit with, with John Dombrowski before the game about how those little things can stack up and make such a big difference. And right there, you, okay, no big deal. I, I, I made one mistake, there's two outs and no one on, but then you couple that with an error, and now you have a power bat and Fox Liam coming up to the plate where, where you can maybe if the mammoths can get a hold of one really bury the beavers this inning yeah i mean looking out of the bullpen i don't think they're they're too concerned right now just to kind of have your one guy down there hanging out he's not up and moving around really so i think the biggest approach here is let esposito do what esposito does best and just Absolutely. put it in the zone by the way fox liam is a grade a baseball name Yo, it is absolutely. my it is my favorite one in the league. Like he sounds like he was born to be a baseball player. He sounds like a creative player. Yes, he does. And then you look at him and you're like, you are a creative and player. And you look at the stats and you go, Oh, you've been here like a couple weeks and you already have three bombs and ten RBIs. Yep. You're playing like one, two. Three and oh the count. So if Esposito can't find the zone, bases will be loaded for Livingston Morris. Livingston Morris will get the bases loaded as a four-pitch walk to Liam. He reaches for the first time tonight. And what should have been a routine one, two, three inning, all of a sudden, the big man who's reached twice, was hit once, walked once, gets a chance to bat. And, well, the home run derby champion yet to have one in a game. It's uh, tough to call it, but that would be It'd be a dramatic first home run. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's no better time than the present, right? Another miss. That's five straight misses by Esposito. And this is where the walk side of Esposito's game can be problematic. Yeah, it's all about, it's about timing. When you are that much of a back end guy, you have to be able to just throw strikes. You can't be walking guys. You can't be extending this time period because you, usually when you're in as a back end guy, there's not space for this. 1-1, one, one, high and in. Hitters count to Livingston Morris. It seemed like that one just slipped just a little bit for him. So a shot in the gap could put the Beavers away. Esposito. Worked himself into a high leverage spot, the 2-1. Just a bit too far inside. 
And if you're Livingston Morris, you're sitting on one pitch and one pitch only. You know Esposito likes to throw the fastball. You know he has to come with you. You're trying to spin it to win it. Yeah, I, ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Bad intentions with the swing, but Esposito makes a better pitch. Counts full. I mean, you want to talk about Mano y Mano right there. He said, I'm giving you my best and you're yours. Power on power, the three, two. Swing and a miss, Esposito overpowers Morris and gets out of the jam. Beaver still trail by four, looking for some help in the bottom of the fifth. But first, we'll have Take Me Out to the Ball Game, sponsored by Genesis Credit Union. Financial champion of Michigan, goal getter, or dream chaser, an empty nester, or up and comer. Anyone in Michigan can bank with us. Michigan schools and government credit unions. And Brady left me all on my own, so now the booth all of me. So. Uh, let's see. Who do we even have out here? Are there any fans? Let's see if our director can find me some fans. See what's going on around the stadium. Oh, see some people dancing. Or I think she's. I don't know what's happening in this one. <laughs> So now we have new pitcher in Cole Coughlin back to pitch the TCU product. So the sidearm will start us off at the bottom of the fifth. And now Brady's back and rejoined me. Ben Wilcoxon lead us, leads us off in the bottom of the fifth. And fans, this is why Brady doesn't leave me alone. <laughs> and it's put inside the third base line. Wilcoxon takes the turn and he'll lead off the fifth with a double. So the second straight inning that a double has led off the inning for the Beavers. Can they make this work and push him across? You know, I think there's a very solid chance that they can finally put it together. So they started to string hits together last inning, started to kind of put it all together and start to see everybody get on base here. So maybe later in tonight in the second game, we can start to see runs start to come across for the Beavers. Well, when your nine hole guy leads off the inning with a double and the top of the order is due up, in theory, that's exactly the setup you want. Chris Davis looking for his first hit of the night. He'll get his first hit of the night, takes it back up the middle. They're not gonna test the arm of Burl Dixon as that was a smart play by John Dombrowski, putting the stop sign quickly up on Wilcoxon, but runners on the corners with nobody out. I mean, two on, nobody out. They're clearly seeing Cole Coughlin pretty well to start this bottom half, or this bottom half of the inning. 
and go back to the, just the last half inning. How big is that strikeout from Esposito to keep the lead, the deficit manageable, get the first two guys aboard, and now, hey, maybe a little confidence brewing in that in that Beaver dugout. They're starting to get a little excitement knowing that, hey, they're they're a couple hits away from being right back in this thing. Yeah, I mean, two hits last inning, two hits this start this inning. You're starting to see the offense come alive. Now it's about if they can start really pushing runs across because they now have that energy. And there's been a whole swing in the momentum here. And whatever Cal Coughlin is throwing, they are seeing well. He hasn't been here long, but he's, he's made the impact early. Coughlin. Just three innings has not surrendered a run. His fan four and just walked a single batter. That perfect ERA in danger, that 0-2. Ooh, a non-competitive swing from Rudy Ramirez. He was completely fooled on that pitch. Yeah, that was filthy. I, I can't lie. That was that was a great pitch by Cole Coughlin right there. Wow. After the first two guys get aboard, that's a... a Great sequence, an elite sequence to get the first out. Now the double play gets you out of the inning. And now you got the guy that almost started the rally the last time out. First pitch to Stubbs, he is over top of it. Well, I think Coughlin settled in a bit. Yeah, I, I mean, it's early. You go out there and you just try to get stuff over the plate so early is sometimes it helps hitters because you're just trying to get over the plate and they're able to drive pitches. Stubbs waits on the 0-1 ground ball, but it'll find a hole up the middle. The Beavers finally get on the board at the RBI base knock, second hit of the day for J.D. Stubbs. And how and about that? Four to one, Mammoth's on top. I mean, J.D. a double in his last debut prior to this, and then coming up here with the clutch hit up the middle to score Wilcox, and that couldn't ask for a better start for him right here. Malik Bolin quietly putting together a productive game two of this doubleheader, a single and a walk. Yeah, another power hitter that could really do some damage here if he gets his pitch. First pitch misses one and O. Oh. Because in one good swing of the bat here, we have a tie ball game. And that has to be in the back of the mind of Taylor Jelenkowski, has to be in the back of the mind of Coughlin as Davis gets the jump and steals that on Coughlin. Now another run, 90 feet away. I mean, talk about the speed of Chris Davis that just didn't even give Scott Combs a shot to throw him out there. That's a situation when you're stealing, you better be right. You're starting to rally in the fifth, essentially the eighth if it's a nine inning game. If you get thrown out, you better, <laughs> that's gonna be a long walk, but there was no chance Davis was getting thrown out. That was an aggressive steal, but it turned out to be a pretty easy one. Yeah. and. Once again, the Beavers being an aggressive team as they are, they are, will not hesitate to go take, try and take a bag, especially late in the game, if it's gonna possibly be the difference maker of whether they can score. Breaking ball misses away to Bolin. Two balls, two strikes. Davis on third, Stubbs on first. Bolin trying to cut into this mammoth lead. Swing and a miss. Another big strikeout pitch from Cal Coughlin. And it brings up Ray Hilbrick. And we talk about big power and everything else. I mean, Ray is right there in the same conversation. Doesn't have a home run yet, but the 341 average speaks for itself. And the amount of hard contact we've seen today alone really just starts to pique your interest and see if he can put a game or bring him throw his team back into the ball game here. First pitch misses away, ball one. And sometimes when, you know, maybe that home run power isn't there, you can look at the deep analytical stuff, the hard hit percentage. And yep. I won't go into all the, the super baseball nerd stuff. Is that one hit high and perhaps playable as Morris is tracking it, works to the dirt and oh able to bring it in. Snow coned it a bit. But Cal Coughlin dances out of danger with the minimal damage. J.D. Stubbs brings in a run, but nothing more for the Beavers. They're finally on the board with the RBI single from Stubbs. And we will keep it here. 
for what is just on the run sheet for me. It just says hamster ball race, so. All right, so it looks like they're going from the gate in left field, you see in the left side of your screen to the foul pole. So this is the first for me. I, I don't, Carsey, I don't think we've seen this yet at the USPBL. No, we're getting creative here. All right, so you can see them. They're, they're all the way in the outfield. There we go. Bubble one and bubble two. <laughs> I, apparently it's bubble one's birthday, so happy birthday, bubble one. Brady, who do you think wins in a race of this between you and I? Between you, me and you? Yeah. You. Uh, well, I, was it, it, it depends. I haven't it, ran in like two years. Yeah, All right, so oh, you're in the bubble. They're off. Fast. Not that fast. There's, there's hat bubble and there's non-hat bubble, and, 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 and our man with the hat is off to a lead. It's hard to pump your arms in that thing. Oh, oh. contact. Oh, oh, they both go down. Did that pop? It looks like Did their pop. bubbles pop? <laughs> he bursted your bubble. He burst this bubble. Now, now my man with the hat's behind. Oh, now he's oh, gonna no. turn around more contact. They both go down again. Oh, he lost his head out of it for a second. There, oh, he lost his hat. Don't know where that went. It's but, in his hand. Oh, he, they're, they're running out of gas and, and our, our man with the hat got the win and the other guy will turtle away. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> Gibby, play some commercials before we come back for the six. You're watching the US PBL Network. At Ascension Michigan, we're committed to being your first choice for healthcare. Our nationally recognized heart program is the leader throughout Michigan in minimally invasive heart valve procedures. For joint replacement, spine, and cancer care, patients choose our specialists for advanced care and treatment. And we also excel in the things that can't be measured. Listening more closely, caring more compassionately. Fifth Third Bank. Yeah, it's a quirky name. But here's the thing, five thirds equals 166.7%. So we put 166.7% into everything we do. Like automatically getting you your paycheck up to two days early giving you well-deserved extra time to avoid overdraft fees. And helping you borrow from your future self. This is banking a fifth third better. Westside Woolly Mammoth trying to add a little insurance for one ball game. Here in the top of the six, this Dre Williams Nelson fouls off the 0-1, 0-2, and, and well, we are re recalibrated. We are we are settled back in for this sixth inning, as I'm sure the Mammoths, after leaving the bases loaded last inning, would would like to at least get that run back. Yeah, I mean, you always want to keep the shutout when you have a chance, but nothing's too hurt here. They still have a three-run lead. And it is Nick Bonk on the mound who gets the punch out. You want to talk about another great name for baseball? That That is another good baseball name, and he threw a couple good pitches. Bonk will come at you, a four-seam fastball, a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. Didn't need to use too many to set down Dre Williams Nelson. Yeah, I believe that was... Three pitches, all right, Adam, just for the punch out. Alex Garbasic comes up to bat, holds up. Pitch wasn't in a bad spot. Ball one, nonetheless. Yeah, Garbasic wanted nothing to do with that one. This is away. Two and oh. Bonk, a native of Buffalo Grove, Illinois. He was a Husky at Northern Illinois University. So from some action to the US PBL, 2-0, swing and a miss. That fastball's got some life on it. Yeah, I mean, 93 on the track man right there. Really just able to elevate and stay away from hitters. We've been talking about just the pure size of a lot of guys. He's right there with everyone else, 6'6", 6 6'6", 6 240. That's a 
pretty big frame coming at you with a mid-90s fastball. I mean, this might be the largest average size that we've had of guys here in probably a few years now. I feel like you could make a pretty good offensive line with some of these guys. We definitely have a good basketball team. Yes. Yes, you would. This is a 3-1, or at least the size. Sometimes, sometimes the size doesn't always translate there, but it would be interesting to see what, what some of the more athletic big men could do in, in other sports as well. As you, you learned, Livingston Morris was a state, and I believe he's a national champion in the javelin throw yeah, coming up in high school. surprise me one bit. No, it does not. Count three and two. I was predicting shot put when he started telling that story, though. I thought so, too, but the javelin was the was his event as Garbasic works a walk. Third time he's reached today. Nice game two for Alex out of the seventh spot. Yeah, and if you're Nick Bonk right here, you just really want to get your double play ball now that it's set up for you. You make a couple pitches here, you get out of it. Simple and sweet. Well, your offense finally got a run across. In fact, the Beavers out hitting the Mammoths. One run on six hits for the Beavers. The Mammoths, four runs on four hits. There was the one Beaver error an inning ago. Yeah, you watch the offense really start to come alive as we've gone inning to inning today. But it's, it's one of those things that it might be happening just a bit too late if you're the Beavers here because right now we're staring at the top of the six. 0-2 the count. Scott Combs grounded into a double play last time. Hoping for an encore performance, at least if you're Nick Bonk. Swing and a miss. Fastball at 93 will do the trick. Second punch out of the inning for the righty out of the, out of the pen. Yeah, some choice words possibly for the umpire there <laughs> is uh, he swings and misses, but. Nick Bach, once again, lively fastball up in the zone, able to generate a lot of swing and misses. Bonk coming into the game had thrown seven and a third scoreless innings and had struck out seven. So he was about a strikeout an inning guy. That number will go up in, with this relief appearance. First pitch catches a lot of the plate. Oh, and one. Oh and one. Runner on first. Garbasic has a very conservative lead. Breaking ball comes through the front door for strike two. And a little bit of a late call there too. Well, sometimes, I mean, with nasty stuff, the umpires could take a second <laughs> to, they, they might have thought fastball out of the hand and it came in, but Colby Seltzer looking for his second hit of the game. He drove in two back in the second. Thought about it, but didn't want it. One ball, two strikes. If you're the Beavers, you're just trying to stay clean here and then hopefully be able to give yourself a shot at it and possibly send this game into the sudden death. The one, two. Swing and a miss. Blew it by him. And striking out the side, Nick Bonk. Heck of a half inning for him. Hoping his Beavers can find some offense. They need three in the six here on the USPBL Network. Fifth Third Bank. Yeah, it's a quirky name. But here's the thing. Five thirds equals 166.7%. So we put 166.7% into everything we do. Like automatically getting you your paycheck up to two days early. Giving you well-deserved extra time to avoid overdraft fees and helping you borrow from your future self. This is banking a fifth third better. At Ascension Michigan, we're committed to being your first choice for healthcare. Our nationally recognized heart program is the leader throughout Michigan in minimally invasive heart valve procedures. For joint replacement, spine and cancer care, patients choose our specialists for advanced care and treatment. And we also excel in the things that can't be measured. listening more closely, caring more compassionately.
Fans have braved it out through these two games, hoping to meet some of the, the players that they've seen on the Mammoth dugout. <laughs> As the Mammoths looking for a big pair of wins, if they can hold on to this four to one lead in the bottom of the sixth, they will be a game up in first place. And at one point in the season, the Mammoths, I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we're in last. Yes, And we're, we're struggling to, to find that momentum. And they were, well, Taylor Jelenkowski, he got tired of everyone telling him that they were the best team on paper. Yep. They go, all right, you can say that enough, but we want to be the best team in the standings, and right now they are. Yeah, I mean, you look at the roster top to bottom, and yeah, they are the best team on paper. You have probably the most talent in this league top to bottom, and you're also just following that up with. Sorry, we had a little bit Cal of Cal Coughlin. <laughs> On the High chopper up the middle. Hussein throws over two outs away from the sweep as Ortega bounces out. Brings up Luke Stevenson. Luke Stevenson, 0 for 1 with the walk. Yeah, once again, looking to see if the power of Luke Stevenson can come through. Well, Luke Stevenson just needs to get on base at this point. Leadoff man wasn't on. This is all about passing the baton and getting to a position where at least get the tie and run to the plate. Yeah, and you're down to your final two outs. The, obviously, like you said, you want to try to get on base, but possibly a leadoff double here puts you in a lot better position, takes away an easy force, right? Right up the middle, if you uh, if you hit something on the ground. One ball, one strike. Misses inside two and one to Stevenson. Yeah, and from that low slot too, that ball's going to tend to run in on you a lot. You can see they start just in the middle of the mound. That way, he's got full control of both sides of the plate. Stevenson out in front of the off speed, two balls, two strikes. And, well, Cal Coughlin has looked in control here in the sixth. He's got such a high potential, especially from down that arm slot, throwing as hard as he does, and able to generate as many swings and misses as he does as well. Three balls, two strikes. Is, is something getting Combs' eye? like some of the dirt kicked up. Talk yeah, about catchers just haven't had a whole lot of luck this year with, yeah. with stuff like this. And I like, can't really say anything besides, yeah, take your time and, and, and get that dust out. Yeah, I think that's probably like the scariest thing for catchers is you've got balls barreling at you at 90 plus miles an hour. And if you have all of a sudden a speck of dust in your eye and you're trying to squint and see something that you've got no chance yeah vision is important for a catcher that is i would say that's about near the top of uh important aspects of catching the three two fouled straight back stevenson battling remember last time he had a long at bat eventually worked the walk four one mammoths in the sixth Looking for the sweep, the 3-2. Swing and a miss, 90 miles per hour at the letters as Stevenson looks skyward and the Beavers are down to their final out. I mean, just elevating from that arm angle, you can just see that ball dancing through the camera. It's, I mean, it's starting out left and it's coming all the way back right. Marcus Judd, last hope for the Beavers to keep this alive. Tying run still in the dugout for the Beavers everything goes according to plan it would be theoretically chris davis leads off judd the eight hitter broken bat single that snapped the handle clean off and judd well he at least gets on base for his first hit of the second game it's funny how 
You talk about doing everything right, and sometimes you get out. Right. <laughs> you go and have instead a broken bat single. Well, it was hard to see where he made contact. I don't know if the bat was just maybe a little old and gave way, but I don't think that hit it on the handle because that came out pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, it jumped off. I mean, it's 79 with for a broken bat hit. That's that's pretty quick, so looked like it caught some barrel. Ben Wilcoxon's had a solid week. Judd's going to take second. And it'll go in as a defensive indifference. As Wilcoxon down 0 and 1. And they have no concern about Judd right no, now. No, his run means nothing. The big concern is don't let Chris Davis get to the plate as a pitch like that will help that cause 0 and 2 on a nasty breaking ball. Yeah, once again, I mean, talking about, you can see the preset kind of split grip right there is he's aiming to throw something that's going to make you miss here. Ball called. Never came set. Huh? Kind of had that rolling where yeah. you bring it down and he's brought it up and set. It didn't set and rolled into it. Now, if there's ever time for a balk, I think that situation it's never really acceptable, but it's the one that does the least amount of damage. Yeah, you can see a reaction on Coughlin's face. He doesn't agree. <laughs> he did. He did roll into no, it. No, yeah, he does. He doesn't agree, but he definitely did. The 0-2 to Wilcoxon, swing and a miss, and Cal Coughlin gets the punch out to end the game. And the West Side Woolly Mammoth, heck of a double header from them. They outscore the Beavers combined eight to one and get a much needed sweep. And now, don't look now, they're three games above 500. Yeah, I mean, we said it in the pregame show, it is anybody's ball game. And if they got two today, they were gonna put themselves in the driver's seat. So now you're talking about a completely different Mammoth team than we saw earlier in the season, especially at the half. And they had a little bit of everything. They had some extra base pop. They had some excellent pitching. Basically, if you were a mammoth pitcher and you got in the game, you had some good tape, you, you put up some good pitches, and you got the help get the win. Yeah, I mean, you go through 12 innings and you only give up one run, I'd say that's a pretty successful day. Have to have a, a feeling that that whole staff in the dugout or in the clubhouse is feeling pretty solid and it's going to be a going to be a pretty happy clubhouse. Yeah, I'd say top to bottom that they really just are going to feel like they accomplished something. You go out there and yeah, you had a few blips here and there between walks and whatnot, but everybody did their job. You were able to keep runs off the board and keep your team in the driver's seat. I think at the end of the day, that's the whole part of your season and using the whole pen. So Carol Wolfbauer is getting ready to talk with our player of the game. A lot of candidates, again, he could have just picked any mammoth pitcher and he could have been in there but colby seltzer had a big two rbi double that broke open the game in the second and the mammoths never looked back she's getting ready to talk with him you see in the bottom right of your screen we'll send it down in a moment when they're ready to go but that had to feel good for a guy who was struggling to hit a two bagger drive in a couple runs and then be named player of the game has to help the psyche yeah i don't disagree one bit i think you know, to come out of that slump and really do damage. That's all he could really ask for there. All right, we'll go down to Kara Wolfbauer. Kara? Thanks, Kevin. I'm here with our Dawn to Dust player of the game, Colby Seltzer. Now in the second year, yeah, give him a big round of applause. In the second year for the Woolly Mammoths, he had a massive double driving in two RBIs. We were just talking before this interview, and he said, you really needed this. <laughs> oh. My phone was on the ground. I'm going <laughs> to. Thank you so much, sir. I'm sure it'll survive. That was very important. We got hugs going on over here. Great job, Josh. Thank you, sir. All right, Colby. Like we were saying, he needed this hit just like he needed that Gatorade, the ice bath right there. So tell me a little bit about that, how you're saying you needed that energy to get you through this game. No, I just needed something to spark my season. I came in here uh, really slow, and so it felt good to get that and feel that for sure. 
Well, you came in here after the college showcase and were able to come in and be with this new group of guys. And you guys are on a five game win streak now, been able to pick up the pace. And how's that been feeling too? It's awesome. This is a great group of guys. Uh, you know, we get along really well. And so I feel like we can just feed off each other. And well, how was the energy in the dugout feeling today? Because we've rarely seen in the last couple of years teams take two on a doubleheader Saturday. No, it's fun. I mean, we're hot, we're rolling right now, and we're going to try to roll it in next week. Roll mammos, right? Roll mammos. Roll mammos all day. Mammos. Yep. <laughs> all right, roll mammos. All right, thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. And those camping out at our ballpark tonight, have a safe and fun night. Everyone on our broadcast, thank you so much for tuning in. We don't play until next Thursday, our Thirsty Thursday, and we'll see you then at Jimmy John's Field.